Welcome to Is Anybody Listening to Me podcast with Azar in the Meat. This is a special, sad episode, actually, uh, um, dedicated to a legend, a living legend that is no longer with us. This is our Sean Connery episode. Uh, we heard the news today that uh, sadly he passed away in his sleep today, and uh, we immediately decided to have an emergency broadcast, a uh, special episode on this. Um, and with the special occasion of Sean Connery passing, our third man has been able to come and join us to add to the conversation. So not only do I welcome my partner, Big Meat, I want to also uh, welcome our third man back. He's back in action here. He's back in black. <laughs> so Aza, when you said somebody important has passed, I, I thought for a second that you met Jarvis. I was like, holy <laughs> shit, did Jarvis just die? Like what happened? Well, most people suspected he was he passed away because we haven't heard from him in a few <laughs> weeks. But but uh, no, we said, no, 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 he's 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 just MIA, but he's back now. He's back to join us for this special tribute to Sean Connery, the legend, Sir Sean Connery, to be exact. What's going on, Big Meat? Uh, I'm, I'm here. I'm here in the back. The faint you know back and black was like coming, coming in from Jarvis. Our poor there producer. You go. He, he wants to be a producer. He can't even get audio to come on. <laughs> <laughs> He's been it's trying. all right. We, we, we can hear it as long as we can hear it. Tw 15 minutes of him trying to get background music. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's coming in a little bit. You got to hold it right up to your mic there, Jarvis. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's there what you, you got to do. Now you can hear it loud and clear. That's what you got to do. So he basically coming before we get copyright sued. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that is right. <laughs> That is a good thing we only have like four listeners, so I don't yeah. think uh, I don't think it really matters. We have more than four. We have a lot of people to complain. Well, we've lost a few. We've lost our three. We've lost a couple. We've oh, I, I am on a mission to get those people back because you know what? They're all full of crap. I'm going to go off on a rant about them if they dare to listen, but I'm not going to tell them what it is yeah. until they have to come yeah. back and listen because yeah. well, they're full of shit. Well, I don't know. They haven't made any comments since the last podcast ah, we had. Antifa and, boy. You know, Antifa three, boy, is, uh, he, he must be busy protesting. I'm going to dominate all of them in this podcast. Don't you worry. Good, good. I, we're happy to have you back, Jarvis. We, we've missed you. I'm angry to be you. back. Oh, good. Do we have angry Jarvis today or, or do we have like... <laughs> do you know this This Jarvis has, has not been ever been unleashed on the public it's like sean connery has never died before i was gonna say maybe sad jarvis we have sad, sad jarvis today it's yeah i mean it is day. it is a uh it is a sad it's day a sad indeed day. Yeah, very indeed yeah, i, I mean, you know what we didn't think i didn't think this day would ever come i mean first and foremost because <laughs> well, he drank from the holy fucking grail yeah when you drink from the holy grail you're not supposed to die i thought the one thing that 2020 would leave safe is my sean connery and they didn't they took him from me covid so, or not I we, could handle COVID. This is too much. We joked about this uh, not that long ago, maybe a month ago. We were saying somebody said something about somebody dying, and, and we thought it was Sean Connery. And, and I remember you guys saying, no, don't tell me Sean Connery died. <laughs> and it was like, no, 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 it was somebody else. And, and now the reality. It's devastating. It's devastating Sean loss. Connery, yes. this is devastating troubling. loss. It, yes. The legend, James Bond. <sighs> James Bond doesn't die. And we no. lost James Bond today. It's brutal. It's oh. just, I mean, 2020, this is the icing on the cake for the <laughs> shittiest year in mankind. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't think in my short lifetime, I know I haven't lived forever here, but in my short lifetime, I cannot believe, I can't think of a single worse year than the year of COVID and to lose Sean Connery in the same year. And to, oh. and to boot, the Patriots are terrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's just a shit show. For us here, the it's hits terrible. keep coming. It's keep coming. It's and we terrible. lost third man for like four episodes. I think it feels <laughs> I like, didn't we? <laughs> and it's Halloween today. There's no trick or treating. Yeah. What am I gonna do with no candy, Azar? <laughs> what am I gonna do? I got no candy to eat now. <laughs> you you have to buy your could, own. You probably could survive a month without candy. Let's be <laughs> I real. Could, I could. I could. I should be eating candy, but I love it. No, just, we like made... I lo just like I love my booze. Yeah. I, <laughs> To replace trick or treating today, we actually made candy apples, which I think is like eating an entire bag of pillowcase of candy in one apple. So, like, not a fan. I never I'm really a fan, fan of either. Candy no, apples. I'm not nope. a fan. I, no, I, and my wife and kids they they love candy apples. They're always buying candy. I'm like, well, caramel apples, not candy, not like that red apple, but the caramel apples. Wait, do you say caramel or caramel? I say caramel. I say, I say caramel. 
Because you just said caramel apple. Carol. Well, when I take when apples, I say caramel apples. Yeah. So caramel, my bad. but it's but if it's but it's a caramel it, when it's you're talking. Arabia. <laughs> it's Arabian. It's Arabian. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't ever. No one's ever like called me out on it. But thank you for your uh, extra special headphones that you got going. To well, pick up listen. Every... I, either way, caramel or caramel, I hate it on both ends. So I pass on it all day. It sticks to my teeth and it makes yeah, it hurts true. to chew. I don't like it. God, you got soft teeth, you old man. I don't know what to tell you. They're You're delicious. Pearly whites. You don't <laughs> like those look. <laughs> They're delicious. Those are I don't want to. I don't want to stare at you. Um, but anyways, yes, big meat's right. Like Halloween is a loss, but Carmel. at least we. But this this terrible uh, tragedy at least brought us together to at least have a special episode. <sighs> Podcast. Moment of silence. There, there's only, there's of only silence one. Sean there's only one positive going on this year. COVID, and, is, and that's my team. My fantasy team is doing pretty well. Your team sucks. You're still You're out Derek of the playoffs. Has. You suck. I am not. I'm You're a hot trash. Do you know what was the worst thing about being in MIA for four jobs. weeks? It was listening to his bullshit takes on the fantasy teams and his jackass picks, and he just skipped over rounds three, four, and five of how terrible his team is, and he's just sitting there waiting for Derrick Henry to stiff arm his way into a 20-point game. <laughs> yeah. oh. Wait a minute. My rounds three, four, five? Come on now. No, two, three, four, and five. Oh, Your whole come on. Sucked. All right, all, right, all right, we're jumping the gun. We're jumping the gun. We're jumping the gun. We're, yeah, you, we're you, so get, you can tell me and Jarvis are playing each other this week. Yeah, yeah. I'm so you guys angry. Are, we're getting Do you know hard. what it is? I'm so sad about Sean Connery that I hate so I hate meat right now. So I'm just so angry. I'm <laughs> playing him. Sean Connery has died. I, I I'm just gonna go off. I'm with week. you That's too. I'm with you too. Hey, I'm 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 a fan as well. Maybe I'm not as a big of uh, as a fan as you guys are. I mean, I, I don't want to, you know. I don't have a have a poster of Sean Connery with his bare chest hanging out of my room or anything like <laughs> like like Gazer does. That that was that was the a present that was given to me many many years ago. It was it was an awkward situation. It was. <laughs> Do it was you like still a have cyber- that picture? No, it was it was damaged in my old house in Drake. No. Yeah, I got mold on it. Like it just. So you don't have it? You got rid of it? Oh no, I don't have it. it that that got ruined years ago. Oh come yeah. on. Well, you yes. can tell it was in my so- basement the whole time because. When I got it as a gift, because we used to do exchange gifts with a uh, childhood friend of mine, and we used to have like these fun gifts, like we used to just pick these like silly things, and he got me that gift, and I looked at him and like, I appreciate it, but why would you get me an old version of Sean Connery if you know I'm a huge Sean- James Bond Sean Connery fan? Like, why do you give me like the young him holding like a gun or something? What would I want with an old bare-chested white beard? <laughs> white chest hair Sean Connery poster it was so, it was the most bizarre <laughs> gift I've ever gotten from my life so because the picture that you no longer have you left it in the basement you didn't take good care of it it ended up getting mold on it so basically because that happened you killed Sean Connery <laughs> that's quite a leap it's he lived 20 years later with <laughs> that that episode but 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 the but the death was just starting like yeah. it was just starting to develop he was slowly dying because yeah. of that moment well you not agree preserve with, that agree with john on this i try not Thou to shall rem- not desecrate sean connery i i don't try to well like i said i never put him in a position i didn't want it ruined it ended up just there was flooding that occurred it was just beyond you're on my control in that situation. It was just sad to see. But Do uh, you know that there was a picture at Applebee's of Sean Connery as Henry Jones, the senior, with Henry Jones, the junior, next to him? And it was when you were walking to the bathrooms, the back wall between the boys' room and the girls' room doors, it was there. And when Applebee's – I forget what was going on. It was right around the time that I got like fired for the second time. And I went in, and it was everything was screwed to the wall. It was part of like what do you, what do you call that? What do you call the decorations? On, they had a stupid word for it. And I went in with a screwdriver on my last shift and walked out with Sean Connery. And it's still it's still here, safe. I see, kept that, the picture safe. That, see, that's a nice picture of that. I, I'm not talking about um, a picture from a movie scene or anything like this. This was. Just Sean Connery posing bare chested. It was just very odd. Um, I think many people would have a hard time justifying hanging that up. I <laughs> thought it was the best present anybody could <laughs> could ever buy you, Azar. And that but, was the best. We we yeah. gotta give we gotta give the guy uh, props for, for yeah. getting you a present like that. That was great. Well, it, what it was 
He's I, I do remind him about that, and he does tease me about it to this day. <laughs> uh, but I want to get back on track to the podcast, and I, we're not reviewing any alcohol. But I did want to share. I I did open up a my res- private reserve Johnny Walker that I picked up years ago on a vacation, and it was uh, John Johnny Walker reps were selling. Um, on this cruise ship, uh, special collections of Johnny Walkers, and they, they, the Suns released these special editions. And if you've ever seen this bottle, have you guys ever seen the Johnny Walker? T- I, 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 no, I've never seen it at your house, Azar. No, no, you have not. There's a reason no, for it, John. No, no, I've never, ever, ever, ever seen <laughs> John, anything also, like that at your I have house. Not. I've never you know, seen that the, bottle before. All the many, many times I've been at your house, Azar, I've never seen it once. No, so it, it's it, got a cross. It's a special edition, and, and, and it, raided your liquor cabinet. I um. I want to know where you are hiding that that piece of beauty right there. Oh, it is a Johnny Walker 21-year-aged blended Scotch whiskey, and it's called uh, Johnny Walker and Son XR 21. And I got it. Um, it's about I bought it because it was a couple hundred dollars. And even the guys, even the reps would tell you Johnny Walker Blue is still the best. But this All is right. one of their. Um, this is one of their premium editions that they've, they've released. But in honor, I never opened it for almost six, seven years now. I've been holding on to it. Oh, look at that. There you go. I'm calling 12 year uh, is what Jarvis is drinking. But in honor of Sean Connery's death and his memory, I decided to open up. Yeah, single malt. But this is 21 year age, not a 12 year, you peasant. This is Sean Connery's death. We're mem- this is his memorial. If you look at this in reverse, it's 21. What? It's twelve. It looks twelve on me on my screen. Twenty-one. Okay. Jarvis, he, Jarvis has been drinking too much before the podcast. But anyways, in a special uh, memory of Johnny, of Sean Connery, I'm having a toast. I opened up my for my special occasion whiskey for him. But but we want to walk, we wanted to move on and have our tribute episode to him, and we were going to talk about the best movies, the top five movies of Sean Connery. And we brought Jarvis on because Big Meat is in this is is in his strength right here is Sean Connery movies, but he's going to contribute. But I hey, wait say, a minute, wait a minute, wait. Hey, wait, hey, I I said I'm not a as big of a fan. I, I'm a fan. I'm a no, fan, I mean, and I did, there's a few movies of his that I really love. Okay, well, start it off. Tell us which. What is your favorite John Con- Sean Connery movie? My number one favorite. Now, okay, so so the James Bond movies. There was, I think he played in seven of them, I believe. <clears throat> and it's been so long since I've seen a Sean Connery, James Bond movie. I don't know if those really, like, I wouldn't put those in that. Like, they're all great, right? They, he made James Bond. They're great. But in terms of, of, of <laughs> during my time of living uh, is when I thought when The Rock came out, that was like the movie. When that came out, that was I, I, it was like one of my favorite movies of all time. And I know how much you love Nicolas Cage, Azar. Nicolas Cage. It, it wasn't him that made Today's the movie. Today's not the day it was... to get me angry about Nicolas Cage. <laughs> was... Today's not the day. <laughs> it, for, for your least favorite actor and your favorite actor to be in the same movie, that's, that's pretty bizarre. Sean Connery made that movie. He was so good in that. And I just thought the action was great. I thought the whole story was great. I loved it because Sean Connery was in it. But and Ed you, Harris. And Ed did you Harris. grasp Ed the Harris concept that The Rock was tying into Sean Connery being James Bond? He was a British SAS operative who was caught and locked up, unfortunately, because that's the American twist. But they were playing on his role as James Bond as a British spy. Years later, and he is that a still true, is, is that true though? Is that your opinion, or is that something no? It's that's true. A, that's a fact. That's the story. Is that, true? Is that really yeah. what they did? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He was a, br- he was a British that. spy that had. Um, what did he have? Like secret footage of like different important timelines Micro- in American history. He yeah, stole J. Edgar Hoover's microfilm. Yes. There you go. Hmm. Yeah. So that was a perfect role for Sean Connery, and. Even though Rock, The Rock isn't my favorite all-time movie of Sean Connery, it's, it's in my top five, but it is not my number one, I give him extra credit because he had to work with such a hack like Nicolas Cage. And he had to overcome 
Your that hatred. shitty acting. But Your I mean, that acting Nicolas was Cage. so bad on with Nicolas Cage's part that if it wasn't for Sean Connery, you could have parked. You could have put anybody other than Sean Connery to play that role, and that movie would have sucked because Nicolas Cage would have ruined it. And you needed someone with Sean Con- Connery's caliber to pick up that movie. So I mean, unless <laughs> I mean, unless you flip the role where Ed Harris was the secret British agent or something, but unlikely. Ed Harris was a number two that helped save that movie from Nicolas Cage because his character was terrible and his acting was terrible. Just, mm. But Sean Connery did save the movie. So that was a good recommendation. Jarvis, do you think The Rock is his best movie? You know, I... I, <laughs> I know you have a hard-on for The Rock. So. And, and that was <laughs> one of his, that was one of his last... <laughs> and that was one of his last movies he's played in, too. Like, he you was... Know, he was yeah, oh, forever, but... Do you one, know of, one of his last movies he played in. One of his last big movies he because he yeah. retired like seventeen he, years ago. He did. He did retire after that. And that was in the nineties. No, no. He made a the... movie with uh, Catherine Zeta Jones. No, I'm not saying it was his last movie. It was yes, one of his right, last movies. He did. Um, Entrapment. Entrapment was good. Yeah, that was Entrapment. a good movie. Entrapment. Yeah. So, so here's the thing about The Rock is is it <laughs> it's probably the most quotable movie. Ever. And there are just so, so many times you can randomly drop a Sean Connery line from that movie. Like, your best. Losers whine about doing their best. <laughs> Winners go home and fuck the prom queen. <laughs> you can just drop that line anywhere, and it's an instant game changer. It, there are just so many lines like, Womack, you piece of shit, where you, you'll you hear us doing that. And, like, there are some guys that will listen that will just randomly blurt that out in mid-conversation, and it's still funny. And it's st- So, for me, The Rock, most impactful when it comes to – like just the influence the movie has had Sean Connery took it to the next level of I'm going to work with Nicolas Cage. You're going to bring me nothing. And I'm going to actually make you look so freaking good that I'm going to act for you and me. He made, he made Nicolas Cage's lines better because he was responding to them or prompting them. So I got to say, and and maybe it's a nostalgia thing too, because when the rock came out, you know, I was, well, for, so, so you say yeah, nostalgia. Was, for me, nostalgia is Indiana Jones. Like, well, that too. Yes, that was my first introduction to Sean Connery. Was his Henry Jones Senior, and I was like, "That's it. I don't care what your guy, what your name is in real life. This is who you are to me. You are. Yeah. This is now real. And whenever I see you, I hold you in the same regard that I hold the Indiana Jones franchise." unheralded that man could do no wrong. He could a, any movie he made before or after doesn't matter. Indiana Jones put him in the and, Hall of Fame. And, and shame on Mr. Roper. I'm going to call him out here. Shame yeah, on Mr. Please. Roper oh, for not please. watching oh. any of the Indiana Jones movies. This is a guy in his 40s, and he has never seen oh. in any of the Indiana Jones movies. Forget the fourth one. Any of the no, first no, no. three, which is first ridiculous. Three. right? Two, yeah. One and three. Uh, skip two, and I'll allow it. Oh, I like two. I oh did like God. two. How do you skip two? I like because, two. I, because, because here's what I say that. If you watch we're going one, on a tangent here. We're going, yeah, a we're little going tangent. On a, if yeah. you watch like one, if you watch one, it references kind of like the nature of Indiana Jones. You get to know him. You got to watch one, but then it ends with the Nazis, whereas three picks up with the Nazis. So it kind of has like a direct storyline transfer, whereas two goes off in the tangent to China. Yeah, but, and but I like I like the I like the uh, uh, I'm a sucker for like kids being being tortured and like he him coming in and saving the day. Like I just I like that. I like that. <laughs> I, I like that story. I don't want to follow him down that road. Yeah. Look, at, you can watch two in a vacuum, but you can't watch three without watching one. Sure. Yeah, that's fair. I, that's agree. What I, I agree. That's fair. So I agree. So that so Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, I actually just watched that. So my wife and I, we just invested in one of those ultra high def TVs and watching it on that TV is almost like watching it brand new because there's so much detail. You just don't pick up with like older TVs, but I was watching it and we were just laughing because we were like the chemistry between Sean Connery and Harrison Ford is so good in The Last Crusade. And it's it almost now, if I'm not mistaken, George Lucas is the brains behind Indiana Jones, right? Right. And it kills me that... I wish they thought of putting Sean Connery in the Star Wars franchise early on because I think he would have fit so well. He did so well working with Spielberg and George Lucas. I just 
It could have been Obi Wan Kenobi. Could have been. Can you imagine if he was the Obi Wan? <laughs> That's exactly who I thought. Imagine if Sean Connery was the Obi Wan. How much more badass yeah. would that? Ca- and I know the character that played it was a very famous. Actor, he was, like and he was respect- older at the time. Like when 19, 1977, Sean Connery was still fairly young. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he played the, his his last when he came back. It was a twelve year, uh, it's about a twelve year difference between his his James Bond movies, and then they brought him back in nineteen eighty three to yeah, play never is one it, more time. Never, never is a never thing. say never say never again. Yeah, something like that. It was something yeah, like never uh, nineteen eighty three. Yeah, so like, and he was fairly still fairly young in that movie so i don't know if it would have worked out but you know, they could they could have made him sean old. connery would have taken the franchise to a whole new level i'm just <laughs> telling you you would have never killed them all so, the flashbacks with them would have been more in depth i'm telling you I, i'm just saying because the chemistry was so good so with harrison I, ford i do so gotta good. say i gotta say so like I, you guys obviously you guys right, love, are in love with but sean that's not connery. the number one movie i, I like i want to go back that is not the number one movie and i'll, I'll go back and okay tell you why. okay all, all right, right. Uh, well look, i just want to f- finish my my thought here because I, i'm a fan of sean connery i i, I don't know if i'm a, of a as big of a fan as you guys are i mean i know azar jarvis you two love each other so much i mean you throw sean connery in there that's a menage a trois right there ready to happen I'm not. I don't know if I'm there yet. I don't know if I'm there. I don't know if I'm quite there with Sean Connery. Right. Well, I, you, I land your plane, buddy. What's What's the point of this? Obvious. It's an obvious point. Yes, I would be in the middle of that menage a trois. If it was. <laughs> that was my obvious. point. That's a given. Okay. That was That was my <laughs> point. <laughs> you know, he was the third runner-up to the 1950 Mr. Universe. Was he really? He was. Wow. Okay. Interesting. I did not know that. Interesting. I, I just want to know. So yeah, I think you kind of touched on this earlier, Azar. Do you prefer the younger, you know, James Bond type Sean Connery, or do you prefer like the older, sophisticated Sean no, Connery no, no, no. with the gray hair, gray chest hair hanging no, out? No, 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 I, no. I, I answered that earlier. So I am, like you were saying, it's not my generation. I don't watch these old Sean Connery movies. I haven't watched them. Every marathon that ever comes out, and it's always near the holidays going into New Year's, there's always a channel that does a James Bond marathon. I watch James Bond. If it's on a marathon, if it's whatever channel it's on, I watch them over and over. Every year, I can tell you, I watch. And I focus on the Sean Connery episodes. I love that classic spy movie. He is the classic spy movie. Um, and he defines it like that. He, no one's played a role better. And I, when you, anytime I watch any of these spy type of movies, there's something about the, the simplicity of James Bond. And when I was ranking my top five, if you look at some of like, if you go to websites, they'll tell you like Goldfinger or Dr. No is some of the two best Sean Connery, Connery movies. But there is a one called From Russia, uh, From Russia with Love. And I think that's his second movie. And it wasn't as flashy as Goldfinger with all the spy car and all that, but it was just him on a train. Like it was a classic spy movie. And Quinn from Jaws, right? The Quinn, the, everybody knows the famous Quinn, was the villain in that movie. And if you watch him in that role, you'll have a new appreciation of how great of an actor Quinn See, was. this is why you need me. His name is Robert Shaw. Yeah, I'm just going to tell you. Quinn was Robert Shaw. Well, I'm, I'm helping Jaws. Be, What's his gonna, name? Uh, like John's going to know him as, as Quinn. From Quinn is Bob. the guy who gave the speech about the Indianapolis that went down. Yeah. It was the famous scene in the boat. But you got to watch, you, you watch the young Robert Shaw in that role. So for you guys that do not know who Robert Shaw is, if you know Jaws, you know Quinn, because everybody knows the movie Jaws, he is the lead villain in that, in that uh, movie. So you got to watch From Russia With Love. It's a classic spy movie. Uh, there's a beautiful blonde that's his um, – because every Bond movie has a beautiful woman mm-hmm. that's one of the characters in the movie. Pussy Galore. No, well, Pussy Galore is one of them um, in, in Goldfinger. But this one uh, – Oh, he knew, love he knew. I had yeah. no idea which, which one she was uh, in. Uh, how do you not know? Way. How do you not know that? I but just anyways. remember the name. I just right. remember the name. That's so, all. The so, but greatest, Russia, greatest character name in movie history. But that is, the, that is a badass James Bond movie. Farah. But – to answer, to go back to what we were talking about, it's the best, and I can't believe, Jarvis, I don't think you said what yours number one is. You just went into The Last Crusade. I can't believe Last Crusade would be your number one. I know you love The Rock, but there's one 
that I would argue is the best Sean Connery movie, and it's you can quote so many things from this movie, is The Untouchables. The Untouchables, right? So that would be that would be the jewel in the crown of Sean Connery. Is like you'd have like really? the faceplate of it be the rock and then you have you have... watched untouchables oh yeah he was so good in the untouchables he, a, he that was his academy award i know all right so we're, are we talking about performances or are we talking about movie are we talking about no, the, the best, best movie i think that what he it, was in i think untouchables is one of the best movies uh, if, yeah, if, if, was really was on good. tv it's one of my top 10 movies it Easy. was really good wow it was I, really I mean good. i liked yeah. it i didn't i wasn't I mean, it's a great. I love mob and mafia movies. I thought it was a it was a great, but it was not. I wouldn't even say it's in my top five. You know why movies. though? Because I don't think it I, it gets played every once in a while, but it doesn't have the cult following like The Godfather or, yeah. or Goodfellas has, right? Because good, but look at Goodfellas. You had to have um, Pesci, De Niro, Liotta. Like you had this cast that was like every every mob person ever was in Goodfellas. The Untouchables had a good cast, but it wasn't the star-studded thing that oh, Goodfellas right. was. De Niro was in it. I mean, it was a uh, Al Capone, right? I mean, it, it, yeah, Elliot Ness. Yeah, and and um, Kevin Costner. I mean, Kevin yeah, Costner, Kevin Costner. Yeah, I mean, Sean they, Connery, De Niro. I it's mean, a that, good movie. I mean, don't yeah, get me wrong. Yeah, it's yeah, a good yeah. movie. I just I, you're. I don't I know. I, I always look at Goodfellas. It. I I see. I looked at Goodfellas as being overhyped. The Godfather as being one of the cult classics. But, oh no yeah. way! Goodfellas is my all-time favorite. Yeah, I Probably. I would put I would put Untouchables up there. Okay, well, well, that's that's fair. I mean, I it's I, I think I if you're talking about performances where Sean Connery was in it, if you're looking at his performance, like wow, he was so great. Like you think of like Batman, um, The Dark Knight, right, with Heath Ledger, like he made that movie. You think like he was a great actor and it. it was great. He played a great Joker. If we're talking about the the role that Sean Connery has played, then maybe maybe Untouchables is there. You know what I mean? I don't know. Or, or James Bond. You could say he, he's he. Was, I mean, today he's the best James Bond to ever play that role. So, um, yeah, I, I just think in terms of movies, I think The Rock was great. Untouchables was yeah. really good too. Um, obviously, there's a bunch of James Bond movies there. Um, you're missing, I, you you're know, missing I, another I, big one. You're missing another yeah. big one. Hunt Actually, for Red October. Yeah, the Hunt, the Hunt for Red, Red October. October. Yeah, that's yeah, of course. That's that's a that's, classic. Uh, that's a classic big one. I mentioned this earlier on the on the text. Um, he played a small role in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and I loved that Robin Hood movie. He it's played a Kevin small Costner role in Morgan Freeman, Robin Hood. Yes, yes, the Prince of Thieves one. He played a scene at the very end. He played King Richard. Yes. Yeah, but and, that's such a minor in, role in that. It's such a, sad, it's such a minor was, role, but he was in it, yeah. and it, and believed it was believed it was King Richard. Yeah, yeah. When he pulled up, like when he came up on the horse, and it was like, Robin oh, it's Sean Brooks. Connery, like playing yeah. King Richard. That's awesome. Yeah, but he yeah. adds he adds a certain element. Anytime he's in any movie, he adds something to that movie. That's the thing about, like, to your point, is that you you think of it as a great role because he made you believe he's King Richard, right? And that's the beauty of Sean Connery. He is one of those great all time actors, and it, it's such a huge loss. Like I. I'm trying to think who would be a bigger loss to to me for a- actors that I love to watch. Like when Harrison Ford eventually passes oh, away. Oh, don't even say it. When he died as Han Solo, a little bit of me was like, I, I don't yeah. know if I can watch anymore. So like that's the impact. Like, like I, I think if people don't appreciate Sean Connery, be like, wow, you guys are really – why are you into it? Think about someone like Harrison Ford passing away. That's the impact. Like all the movies that you love and just enjoy, and Harrison Ford has much touched more movies that I love than Sean Connery has, but just to just to lose him would be such a blow. I, and to I, lose someone like he's that level of like. I would agree. I would agree. And and I was actually for, crazy. I was actually thinking about this yesterday, um, for whatever reason. I don't know why I was thinking about this. Sylvester Stallone, like when he oh. passes away, I'm thinking That's like, a good one. right? I mean, all the, like you grow up. Like That's you grew Rocky up watching, and Rambo. Yeah, yeah, like all the action movies you grew up watching. You think Schwarzenegger may be one if you're he's a not Terminator young, buff. right? Yeah, he's not young. So he's yeah. not. He's he's right around the corner. Hell, we're not young. We're we're uh, we're around the corner ourselves. But he's such a void of great actors. Like when like when these generation of guys go, there like who? I mean, even Denzel Washington, who I think is one of the top five actors of all time. 
he's up there with that class of guys. Like he's not even a young guy anymore. So I can't think of who is yeah, coming Tom behind Hanks these guys. There's another one. Yeah. Yeah, but he's again, he's another guy that's been around since we were little kids. Like he's yeah. older. He like these guys, this whole generation of actors are going. And then we're left with like there's such a void of like if this actor comes like even um I'm thinking of not um Robert Downey Jr. He's not a young actor. Like he's not a young guy, but he's fairly younger than the, this crop of guys, sure. right? But after him, I mean, do you look at some of these guys like Ral- um, what the hell's his name? The Hulk, the Hulk character, or um, Chris Evans? I don't look at those guys no. at the same level. No. What about Leonardo DiCaprio? He's been around for a little while, and he's still young. Yeah, I, he he's doesn't play it in. Yeah, his movies aren't cult classics. Like, what movie do you yeah. watch of Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio? You say, if it's on TV, you stop every time. Yeah, like, do you say the same thing about Mark Wahlberg? Yeah. I mean, oh. or The Rock. I mean, you might watch those movies. Now, but- wait a second. The Rock, like Dwayne Johnson? Yes. Right, right, right. You yes. touched the nerve, Azar. You t- yes. With The Rock, you touched the nerve. Dwayne Johnson movies aren't even <laughs> hit a nerve. They're they, they nowhere at the same caliber. As- I, I don't care. I will watch anything that Dwayne Johnson does because he, he just cracks me up. When yeah. he goes, but, but he, as an impactful actor, The Rock is a character that he portrayed. Is is not, you know what I mean? Like that. Not to be confused with the movie The Rock. Not to be confused. <laughs> Maybe that's why I loved him yeah. right off the shoot because he he played off that. But like when when Dwayne John, if Dwayne Johnson dies, if Hulk Hogan, when Hulk Hogan dies, forget it. Oh yeah. Harrison Ford, and and you're right, Sylvester Stallone. Like, yeah, you know you know what? Yeah, this is depressing me because you know what. You know why this is depressing me? But this this because, episode is a good episode to, because we're in mourning and we're trying to remember the life no, of Sean Connery and all the other true. things that are. No, but you but you know why this is this is sad is because <laughs> we're we're getting older. We're getting older, and the older we get, the more of our of our heroes are are gonna go. Like it's gonna be more oh. fat. Like when we were younger, we we're like, oh, that guy died out, whatever. Like we didn't really know him though. Yeah. But as we get yeah. older, it's like we're gonna start we're gonna start hearing these in the news more frequently. And oh, it's... I thought of another guy, Clint Eastwood. Yeah, he's, can't now, he's Clint not Eastwood. He and Sean died. Connery. He hasn't died yet. I thought he died like <laughs> seven years ago. But Clint oh. Eastwood is in that Sean Connery category. Like category. Yeah. Like he is a living legend. What about Arnold Schwarzenegger? No, I, I said him same. already. Yeah, but you did. He's a he's I from an act. Dumbass. Like from an actor, like from a quality actor, Clint Eastwood was one of the best actors out there. Yeah, Clint Eastwood was is was great, and and he's such a great producer too. He's produced yeah. so many great movies too. So. Yeah. As we get older, we're gonna see a generation of guys that we love, like anywhere from De Niro, Pacino, all those guys. So, are so those are the happen. guys. It's when De Niro goes, when Pacino goes, when Harrison Ford goes. Um, you'll you'll get you'll get it. Like those are the big guys. Yeah, Keanu Reeves. So you know, I was trying to think. I was trying to think from my parents' generation. You guys, did you guys like not the, hear me say Keanu Reeves? John, we, we're ignoring go, you. That's like that's like what Nicholas Cage. <laughs> that, was, that was supposed to be a joke. You're supposed to laugh at that. That was that was funny. Today is not the episode for your garbage. <laughs> to bring up names. We're sorry, talking about the sorry. greatest actors. I apologize. And, and I he am, throws I, out Keanu Reeves, I number two in the shit acting. I know bucket. it's a very it's a sensitive day. I know it's. I'm. I apologize. I know you are in mourning. That was. That was too soon. too soon. So wait, I got one for you. Sean Connery, similar to The Rock, where he saved a movie. Now, this movie is probably one of the worst rated movies of all time. But if you watch it, it's actually entertaining. And it's purely because he is in it. And it used to be on TV all the time. And, I can, and I, I'm so glad I watched it because now I can watch it and enjoy it when it's on. And it still gets like a one on Rotten Tomatoes. It's a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Now you, I like that movie. I, I liked it. really enjoyed it. It was and like I, that was actually his last movie he he was in. Uh, it was, it was, it was, was con- a blockbuster. It was considered a flop, and it was so good that I, I like. I don't know why it was a flop. It was. It's so entertaining because yeah. it's like Alan Professor Moriarty. It, it's a little bit of Sherlock Holmes, but like like Tom Sawyer. It's like every novel, like. I, I don't know what the right word is or, or the genre, but it was like Tom Sawyer. He's he's not um, he's not Stanley Livingston from, a- but he's some hunter from Africa. Then there was the portrait of Dorian Gray, and like there was just all these like stories. I, I don't know literary literary 
terms is not my strong suit, Trebek for a hundred. But but it was a like, collection of famous a, characters from yeah. different books: Dorian Gray, um, Dracula, uh, the Invisible Man was Invisible in it. Man, yep. And Do- and um, Charlotte, uh, what's his name? Oh, uh, Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, uh, yeah, Jekyll and Hyde. But the character that Sean Connery played is also a famous character from a book yeah, too. Yeah, he was so, a hunter. Yeah, so it was a collection of great twenty thousand leagues under the sea because they yeah. had the Nautilus and great Captain book. Ahab. Yep, yep. that Ahab, movie um, was really entertaining. Nemo, I oh, know Nemo, Nemo. I'm sorry, Captain Nemo. Captain Nemo. Oh, yeah, good. I saved you from our three. If he was listening, well, you know what it was. I was thinking that the the name of the ship and then the name of the ship in the Matrix, and it, was it when they all align? Uh, I can't remember the Matrix. It was so long ago since I watched the Matrix. The Never Kinesic, right? Wasn't all that part of all that? Uh, no. What the hell was the name of the, the Nautilus? Was the Nautilus the submarine? Yeah. The Nautilus was the submarine. I thought there was a correlation in my head, but it doesn't matter. It's only in your head, Jarvis. It's only in your head, Jarvis. But where did Sutterakis go? Probably went to the bathroom. Oh, is that why it says Sophia? <laughs> it's because we're using a. Oh my God. I was like, a chat just came up. I feel like I'm going to be indicted for child porn. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Jeffrey Epstein. Sophia's going to make a drink. I was like, I hope nobody <laughs> accuses me of this. Hey, what the hell? What are you guys talking about? I had to go get a drink. Yeah. You, you, your name is Sophia here. It is. It is. Blame well, the think, raccoon. Blame well, the raccoon for that. The chat just popped up and it says Sophia is going to make a drink. I was <laughs> like, oh my God. I confuse <laughs> you. There's the big yes. meat. Uh, anyway, anyway so League of Extraordinary Gentlemen yeah. is. Yeah is should be in the list of top five but it was so critically unsuccessful or whatever that it just never got the top acclaim five, but, though i don't know yeah. so good i don't know yeah, top don't know. five is a little is a yeah, not top five what, what is the unsung hero or like dark horse the dark the horse hero? i like it yeah. i like it yeah he but yeah. he did but that was that was his movie he that was his last movie. uh movie he acted now he did he did some voiceover work since then but that was the last movie he's actually he was actually in yeah yeah and he, he did make that uh, movie 2003 it, he made that movie good yeah i agree with that i agree with that so again we'll wrap it up and move on from the conversation here but it was a tremendous loss as you can tell we're very upset about it and those who know me know how much i love sean connery i love james bond it's one of my favorite characters of all time. I mean, it's a franchise that I would argue I may love even more than the Star Wars franchise because I just love the James Whoa. Bond. But Whoa. it's, yeah, it, it's, it's a that's, big, it's meaningful to me. It's a big loss. Uh, that's a statement right there. Yeah. yeah. Not that, old statement. Not that I would find people who say it's a better franchise or the movies are better than Star Like, I get that. But um, to me personally, I have a passion, love for. See, I thought he played a great James Bond, obviously, but. I thought those James Bond movies back then were a little, were a little cheesy, a little corny, right? Austin Powers like came out and, and spoofed them to the point where like he was basically making fun of them. Yeah, I think, not the, I think no, the newer spoke- James Bond movies, and I mean newer, like the last 20, 30 years, they were more better action, better stories. I think back then the villains were a little bit weird, right? Who was the guy? That's not fair. What, was no. it Doctor No with the guy with the hat? And he's like, you throw the hat. That's Goldfinger. That's Gold a villain. Finger. Finger. Yeah. But, you're, but see, the problem is I'm that not, not, there's not, they were simpler. And if you watch From Russia with Love, it's a classic movie. And his name was, was Odd simple. Job. Yeah, Odd Job. I mean, one of the most famous Bond villains. And you call him, you don't even know, he's the guy with the hat. Anyways, <laughs> I guess you see what you're saying, Big Me. But so, what, so what Austin good. Powers is spoofing on is when the James Bond started getting silly with the Roger Moore stuff and some of the storylines. I don't think silly. so. I think he was more making fun of the, the Sean Connery older movies. Cause they were a little bit oh. like out there with like, they're a little bit bizarre. Like they were go there. Where's Javis going right now? Where is he he's taking us on a tour? He's going, he is going, he's, he's gonna going make us the... nauseous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I, you know, at Austin power movies, Whatever they were spoofing, what they were, but I thought some of the elements they were. But that that had nothing to do with Sean Connery. Like Sean Connery made like he played the role great. If you took Sean Connery, if you went back in time, you took Sean Connery and you brought him now, and he would play James Bond today, he would be phenomenal. I mean, it would be the best James Bond movie ever. But it's just I see. I don't know because right now the special effects are so. See, Daniel Craig 
brings back the classic element of the Sean Connery. The simpler movies, it's not as flashy with some of the special effects like Pierce Brosnan brought in sure. with his. His Pierce Brosnan, the storylines, everything, there's more special effects where the Daniel Craig ones were darker, more simpler, like the classic Sean Connery. It, it's just, it, there's different generations of or evolution of the, the James Bond franchise. And I actually like the Daniel Craig version and the Sean Connery versions the best because they're the more simpler. Stories are still complex and sometimes silly, but at least you're not, you're not using special effects to make the movie. You're relying on the actors to get. Hmm. You I like the, the PS Brosnan ones. The original. I do like, they, I like the not, PS Gold, I like, um, I like them all. Was, Goldeneye was really good. I'm, just, I'm not oh, knocking. Great. I like Pierce Brosnan. I thought he did a good job. I'm not knocking it, but I just felt they relied so much on some of the special effects and they brought in these big names like Halle Berry, uh, Lucy Liu, and like all these other women to kind of help prop up the story. Well, stories. I think that was later. Denise, yeah, I think that Denise was later Richards. on with Pierce Denise Brosnan. Richards. I think that was, yeah, it was a little bit Christmas. too Hollywood for me. I, yeah. I agree. Christmas only comes once. Where, they, where you think of some of the old ones, and I know. They're fam- they were famous, but like some of the James early James Bond, the women were just these unknown, beautiful women from different parts of the world. They weren't trying to bring in this famous woman to kind of uh, over overtake the story a little bit. Like, mm-hmm. like Pussy think- Galore. No, Pussy Galore was a simple. <laughs> but she wasn't the main character in the story, though. But see, it, it, the compliment to the Sean Connery uh, James Bond is that Austin Powers was able to spin an entire franchise of comedy off of. You couldn't do that with the uh, Timothy Dalton James Bonds or any of those <laughs> garbage awful. ones in the middle. Was awful. But yeah. even like like Roger Moore is probably who I f- actually I first thought James Bond was Roger Moore before I discovered that Sean Connery was James Bond. I actually yes. knew Sean Connery first as Indiana Jones, and then like that led me down the Sean Connery rabbit hole. And then I was oh my god, did Roger Moore get out of the way. Yeah. So because you're, you're only like 26. That's exactly you're right. Doing. Thank you. And <laughs> yeah. so I took that as like this. Anything that's so good that can be spoofed is truly the cream of the crop or the, or the top of the class. So when you take a whole Austin with the Austin Powers was funny as hell. But to your point, it took the Sean Connery James Bonds and made fun of them, it didn't bother dealing with the other nonsense. So again, I think it kind of rests the case that the Sean Connery James Bonds were the elite, even if they were, as I said, the more simple story with, with action and twist, but not the graphic dependent or whatever the eighties versions yeah. were. Yeah, oh, I'm going and, and to throw a dagger at big meat because he's, he's knocking on the James Bond by saying, Oh, Mike Myers was able to spoof with Austin Powers. Well, let's not forget the famous Mel Brooks spoofing on Star Wars, space making balls. space balls. So every so great good. movie so gets, may get spoofed at some point by some that brilliant man of That's his generation. True. So Mel That's Brooks, true. look, my you know space me? balls is one of my, my all time favorite. Comp- so there you go. Wait a second. Wait a second. Azar, you just hit it. When Mel Brooks dies, I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. He, <laughs> Robin Hood. Men in tights. Have you seen that? Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Oh my God, Blazing yeah. Saddles. Blazing Saddles was great. Young Doctor Frankenstein. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, he, come he, hasn't, on. he hasn't done anything in like forever. But I mean, he's when, been retired when... for like thirty-five years. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. But I, but Spaceballs, like that's oh, he's one doing of those vo- movies. You... He's doing voiceovers in Hotel Transylvania. He's doing voiceovers. So oh, his he... grandfather. So Spaceballs is one of those movies when it's on TV. I'm watching it. I got yeah. it. It's like yeah. Rick Moranis is the man. He's the man. I, I, oh, I was. Wow. I actually had to show my kids that that movie, and it was it was like it was on TV, so they they it was like the the PG rated version of it. Yeah. Uh, but it was like I just had to watch show it because I was like, it was so funny, and they laughed. They, they loved it. They loved yeah. it. So you, yeah, you I have agree. To Mel have Brooks a, you is, have to have an understanding of Star Wars first to truly yes. appreciate it. Yes. But my God, is that and that and Robin Hood Men in Tights? If you watch it, like the Kevin Costner Robin Hood, the Prince of Thieves mm-hmm. that we touched on, if you watch that, and then watch it. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Hit, Carrie Ells and Dave Chappelle just what he <laughs> what they wrote. Oh my God, it was. I, I just laugh thinking about it. I just can just laugh thinking about it. All right. See, so, you know so I, I'd love to have a, a a moment of silence for Sean Connery, but I don't know if that I works so well at a podcast. No, no. But you know what? <laughs> I like we what get, we've done. 
We, we, we got to have a very, very short, very, very short moment of uh, moment of silence. But Sean Connery's memory, look at the road it led us down. We started talking about oh, Mel so Brooks. And they, so I think that's where we should wrap it. We're more on a positive. He right has now. We're impacted a lot of our lives. Yeah. He's, he's impacted our lives in many ways. Yes. And I think while we're in COVID, we're still on this COVID shutdown. If you haven't watched some of the star, uh, Sean Connery classics like, God, if you haven't watched The Rock, Shame on you! If you haven't watched Untouchables, if if you're a hunt for Red October, hunt for Red October, October, if you haven't watched James Bonds, any of the James Bonds, especially the early ones in the early 1960s, Entrapment, even that was even that was a good movie. If you like Catherine Zeta Jones, she she was awesome in that one. She was was my yeah, Yeah. she was my favorite back back in the day. Yeah, and then she got married to Michael Douglas, and then it just she just stopped. That was it. That was it. What happened? Yeah, yeah, that was it. Because after she, I think she did Zorro. Then she did Entrapment, oh, and then so she, was, yeah. she was beautiful. Yeah, oh. and she was, and then you were like, she married that old dude, really? Why? Yeah. Oh. But anyways, that's a little tangent of disappointment. But um, take the time; you got to watch this. I like, and if you haven't watched any of the Indiana Jones, for God's sakes, do it now. Mr. Roper. You, you know what it is too? It's it's just watch any Sean Connery movie and appreciate the greatness of of how he acts like the watch actor a league himself. of extraordinary gentlemen and you will see a <laughs> terrible movie made great by that one man's yes. acting and you know yeah. what in the spirit of halloween that's actually a good movie to watch during halloween because hmm, yeah. it, it, that that if you like a lot of the old classic halloween characters they're actually yeah. in there you would actually right. enjoy All it. Right. yeah dr so. jekyll mr hyde the invisible man the portrait of dorian gray was a haunted painting yeah absolutely I, I like might it. have to. I might have to watch it. I like it. I, I, I think, think it's still I'm, on Netflix. I think that's. Is it really? I think it's still on Netflix. Ooh. So man. I might have to watch it. I might have to watch it. All oh, right. Man. Let's wrap it up there. Um, I want to touch because I am shocked. I am shocked. The the Sean Connery death has overshadowed the launch of the Mandalorian series um, season two, and we were going to talk about it, but Big Meat didn't watch it, and I am. Floor that big I know, I know. He, I've been busy. I've if been any busy. man, hey. I swore on Friday you would have cut out of work early. <laughs> and I, when I found out, I got an alert on my phone that it's available to stream. I'm like, Big Meat is watching that, even if it's during work hours. You know, I, I actually, like Friday morning, if I ended up seeing talk about the retirement home in Maine. You should just stop it now. <laughs> no, I know that. Well, it, it actually has a big part to do with it with uh, today having to close up the place because it's seasonal. But Cribbage yesterday, <laughs> yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So yesterday I saw a little like, ad that popped up. Will you just let me finish my, my <laughs> Jesus old maid, <laughs> crazy eights. <laughs> so, bocce. Bocce on the beach. Yeah, gin it's rummy. not nice enough weather for bocce. Definitely gin rummy. <laughs> gin rummy. Gin rummy. There you go. Oh, go fish. Did you say go fish? No, I was going to say bingo next. Bingo. Bingo. All right. All right. You know, you, can I finish my thought now? Oh, or, or, do, you, do you have all, bingo? We're all hanging here we're waiting for this thought to finish. Yes. I'm yes. on bated breath. My thought was that the, the little ad that popped up on my screen saying now streaming, I said, oh, I said, oh, I can't wait to watch this today. And it just, it was just a busy day yesterday. And then today was another busy day. So I haven't had a chance to watch it. I know, Azar, I know we, this was kind of a, a little impromptu uh, podcast that we threw together. If I knew we were going to podcast, I would have definitely had watched it, but I did, so, but you did, but you did. So, so why don't you fill us in on the, the spoiler free review of what you felt the first episode was like? Okay. So I can, what I'll tell you that it won't spoil, and I got to say, my wife was so excited for the launch of The Mandalorian with me that she's the one that nudged. I was like, I, I, I presented the idea, let's get a new TV for Thanksgiving during Black Friday. She's like, why are we going to wait? Why don't we get it now and watch The Mandalorian in ultra high def? And you know what? I was sold. Like, she's my bad influence. It's like bringing Big Meat somewhere. You know Big Meat's not going to tell you not to spend the money. He's all about, ah, what the hell, you only live once. So that's that's what I got at ah. this. So so we splurged. And I got to say, so so we were watching the movie. We were excited. So I thought, because, you know, like most shows, you kind of get, like, trained. You thought they were just going to build on how the ending of last season when you had – that um, mysterious character, that general from, uh, I don't know. Breaking he, Bad. Breaking Bad. He's in The Boys. He's in. Yeah, but I forget his name yeah. is the general, but um, is he, he's still part of 
the Empire, and you thought they were going to yeah. build, but they actually went on a separate story. He, he has that special sword. Now, I didn't watch any of the animated uh, Star yeah. Wars, like, but he had this like famous lightsaber. Yeah, right? the dark saber. Uh, the dark yeah. saber. Yes. And yes. and that's and they, so when you're watching the um, when they were showing the recap of last season, that's what they finished the recap on is him cutting through the Tie Fighter with the dark saber. So I was like, oh, they're just going to continue the story. So if you're looking for that in the first episode, they don't. They kind of go on a separate story, but they go back to Tatooine. So they I just, bring I, just you- I just have to interrupt you because <laughs> Jarvis. Yeah, he's Jarvis. I gotta tell you, Jarvis is showing his old Hulk Hogan, <laughs> old what? What do you? What, what are those? Those are the. Uh, those are the classic Hulk Hogan dolls. <laughs> those are the best. And the tiny, those white, are the tiny yellow oh, shorts. I just, I love it. I love it. Those. That that probably is worth some money there, Jarvis. He is showing the old. Can you classic, see the date on that? Nineteen eighty four. Nineteen eighty four. Those are why, the why uh, is his ass cheeks. The yellow paint is rubbed <laughs> off on it. What do you do you know, with that thing? You get a little rub in there. <laughs> he rubs the whole head. A lot of leg drops. Yeah. Um. Those Anyways, are the best toys. That's that's our professional third man right here. He's playing with the Hulk Hogan toy while we are Anyways, just to summarize, it, the nice thing about this first episode is it goes it brings you back to Tatooine like the first episode of Star uh, Star Wars so and they introduce a character they bring back a character that everybody's going to be get excited about there's this character returns I did from, hear that I did I from I the original some, franchise yeah yeah they didn't say who it was they just uh, I just I saw the it. title it's I saw the good. headline and I said oh I wonder who it is okay uh, one, I'm going to watch it I'm going to watch it tonight when you after. watch it you're going to be like so excited they're bringing this character back. Yeah. And, it, and I think it, I know who it is. I think, but I'm not going to say anything. I'm, no, I don't want to, I'm not no, going to no say spoiler, anything. but no. it is great. And it still has the same classic touch to it. And that's what is great about it. It uh, is still got the same classic so Star great. Wars, simple story, not over special affected. And it just brings And you know what? That's what I thought about from the, like, we keep talking about these Star Wars movies, like what's missing, what's missing. Is the fact that they, and I think that's why I liked Rogue One, because they brought in some of the old vintage Star Wars part of the story into it. They tied it in together better. That's what The Mandalorian does. It actually still ties in a lot of the original franchise into the storyline. And it just makes you feel like you're, it's just a continuation of that story mm-hmm. where the new franchise did not do that. It just kind of went on its own tangent, I felt. But got to watch it. We'll review it next week, Big Me, because I think once... Because we'll give everybody a couple weeks to have a chance to to stream it and watch it. But there will be spoilers on the mm. next one because it's so I damn mean, good. Look, I mean, what else is there to watch, right? It's it, There's not much going on right now in Mandalorian Season 2. Thank God they filmed, you know, all their scenes pre-COVID or during, whatever. However, they were they were still managed to release it and people could still watch it. Because yeah. in another month or two, this is going to be nothing. Like they're not Hollywood's not doing anything. Right? January I mean, eighth, January eighth, Cobra Kai. Oh, they filmed it. They could release it January eighth. Ooh, I think that's... I think I think Hollywood's filming, but they're doing it out of California. Oh, okay. Like they, so are they kind of remember, doing it in a bubble, like uh, the NBA did their thing? Like they're, they're just... probably doing it. Other like do you know how like some states they like a lot of filming is like done in Georgia and other states. I think they went to other Southern states that have more flexibility okay. and freedom. Okay. They probably just got out of California. And I think I th- if California doesn't play its card right, there's going to be a new Hollywood somewhere else. So they're just going to pick up and leave. They're yeah. not going to wait and destroy millions of dollars of opportunity just because yeah. like, it's like Disney is flipping out <clears> because <throat> they won't open up. The guy's being unreasonable, but everywhere else, They've had a chance to open up yeah, with you think certain about, conditions. Yeah, you think so. about all the streaming services. Like, I mean, the the entertainment industry is massive. Yeah, I mean, that's like, yeah, if you're not making anything like that, then and people, especially when people are in quarantine and they're stuck at home and they're like, they got to watch something. And and I'm happy to hear Mandalorian. You know, has their season out. I can't wait to watch it. Cobra yeah. Kai is another big one. Season three, that's yeah. huge. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's anything else that I'm too excited about that's coming out, but uh, those two are big. Those two are the the two yeah. big ones there. Yeah, I can't. I don't even know. Uh, I don't know if there's another Stranger Things coming out. I haven't. I have to, would have to research. Yeah. But anyways, let's since 
let's move on from that because Mandalorian was more of a teaser. Just let you know, you got to watch it. I'm going to say it wasn't my favorite episode until, but there was parts of it I loved because what what's going to come down the road is awesome. Mm. But it wasn't it wasn't the best episode. You know, how some of their episodes can be kind of like kind of quiet, not not a lot of. Maybe maybe I'll I'll bring it up uh, offline here uh, yeah. to just to just to ask you that character because I think I know what character you're talking about, All but right. I don't want to mention it on this. Yeah, podcast. don't mention it on the podcast. We won't spoil yeah. it for anybody. All right, so let's move to more importantly. This is um, fantasy football season still going on. Let's keep enjoying mm-hmm. it while we still have it. I it. Um, what is weird is despite all the COVID outbreaks that are recurring in different states and all the, the dire warning in the news and all the, you know, all hell is falling apart because the way the media makes it, somehow the NFL has cleaned up their act. I haven't really heard of any major, like what we saw from the Patriots and the Titans and the Steelers, we thought things are just going to get out of control and even worse. But it might not, if, unless I'm wrong, correct me, it seems like they've done a good job of stabilizing. Yeah. COVID. I, right? I feel Is that like, fair to say? yeah, I feel like, and I just heard, uh, just read today, uh, uh, Minnesota and I think Denver had a, had a player or two that, that had COVID, but I think now they're looking for they're, they're looking at it and saying, okay, the one player or the two players, like they're not playing. The game is still on. Like, I don't think they're, I don't think there's that, that overreaction anymore. Like there's yeah. not like, all right, we're going to cancel the whole game. We're going to switch. I just think they're okay. They got one guy. None of what you said is actually factual. Say it again. None of what you said is is what's happening. Minnesota and Denver? No, not that. By the way, no. So Buffalo has their tight end, Dawson Knox, who has COVID. They've banned from playing anybody that was in the tight end's room to determine that that has been in close contact. So there's another tight end and a fullback. So there's only one tight end, Tyler Croft, that can play. The Las Vegas uh, Raiders last week had Trent Brown test positive, and the rest of the entire offensive line was sent home to quarantine until he tested negative. So they're not only just taking the player that tested, they're going back three days and taking anybody that was in close contact or whatever their close contact guidelines is and also treating them as if they're positive, which is new since the Patriots Chiefs. So that was not the protocol prior to the Chiefs Patriots breakout. It was since then. So Gilmore was the last positive that you didn't have to quarantine every player that like touched his jockstrap. No, but my point is, is that when you, when, what my, what my point is, is when you hear somebody, when they, when they say a team has a COVID, somebody who has COVID, they're not overreacting and they're not canceling games, they're not postponing games. No, but, but they just, almost had to cancel the Raiders game if they didn't find a way to get, because you can't, you can't replace five offensive linemen for a game. It's, yeah, but they played the game, right? Because there was enough time that went by. They almost had to But they played that. the game. My point is, earlier in the season, now, it comes Cam down to Noon, time of the week. Cam Noon came down with COVID. All of a sudden, you they, didn't they listen canceled to me. the I whole game. I caveated the Chiefs game. I, I said this was post the Chiefs game. The Vegas Raiders. So my point is, exactly, stupid. is that, no, it isn't stupid. <laughs> it's because it's because back then they said, oh, one guy gets COVID. Oh, we got to postpone it. We got to move to a Tuesday night game. All of a sudden, it's like, now you start hearing this news. They said, you know what? We could still get, we could still move on with the season. I think it always comes down to money, right? Roger Goodell is not going to sit there and say, I said this two podcasts ago. Eventually, but you're going to run listening. out of time. You're going to run out of time. You're going to run out of um, – um, you can't keep postponing games. Bye weeks, they only have one bye week for the season. Eventually, they're just going to say, look, we can't, we can't have a, a week uh, 18. We can't – keep pushing this this season out we can't keep putting teams playing on tuesday night so eventually Why not? Just i love say, the tuesday night product anyway. i loved it too i loved it too but i think they're just running out of time so i think for them now they're thinking look we got to get through the season we got to get the games played and roger goodell loves his money too much the owners love their money too much they're gonna play these games i don't i don't i think they're right now they're looking forward to they're looking at it as saying okay one guy gets COVID. Let's get him out. Let's quarantine him. Let's test the other guys. If we could get the game going, let's go. Now, if it was like Tennessee Titans, where every all of a sudden there's like an outbreak and like five or ten guys get get COVID, then that's a situation they have to deal with. But 
If it's one or two guys, hey, just play the game. Play the game without those guys. And, and that and that's a whole different that was, that's a whole different approach to what they were doing at the beginning of the season. That was my that's 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 my point. So it's it's kind of a we went on a long tangent, but like no matter what they're doing, I feel like they've done a better job at stabilizing it. And I think to Jarvis's point where they're being more stricter about how close people are to each other, that just means the team just have to be smarter about keeping more distance in these in the rooms, right? Because if they're going to go contract tracing and saying everybody that was within proximity of this person, they just have to be smarter about it. And in in I know me, you're saying it's the money, but I want to just on this last point, I just think the guidelines keep changing as they learn more. I think that's what it is. It's just because we're going through this on a personal where one minute the town is telling us everybody that was on these, um, my daughter's classrooms have to be quarantined now. And now we get a memo saying, oh, we made a mistake. The guidelines, the contract tracing rules have changed. And it's just, it's almost like people are making crap up as they go. No one really knows how to make the right criteria for everything. And, and some of it just seems excessive, right? But yeah, but whatever, I, I, whatever it is, is they figured it out. And that's the more important thing. Is and that it, they, might not, it might not be money. It might be, I mean, if, you're, if you want to get into like school and education and everything, it, it's it's what they can do without um, uh, it, it, without like completely blowing the the whole thing up, right? I mean, the NFL see they want to get through the NFL season. They want to actually play these games. Early on in the season, they said, "All right, one or two guys get COVID. Uh, we could work it out. We could put a guy in. A, we could we could reschedule the games on a bye week. We could schedule a Tuesday night game. Eventually, now we're in week seven, week eight." Now they're running out of time. They're like, okay, people's bye weeks have already passed. We can't put them, we can't play them on a bye week. It just gets to a point where they 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 don't even know what to do. So they just want to get these, they, they just want to get the season through. Yeah. So what can they and do? I think they're doing so, a great job. Yeah, I and I think it's I think it's working out fine. I say that they should have done this at the beginning of the season, but you're right. I, I don't think they knew at the time when the season started, you know, like should we play these games? Should we not? There's also a little bit of a public uh, backlash to to it as well, um, but yeah, I yeah, mean for I me, I, th- I think for me too, and I'm biased when it comes to it, and I think you guys would agree. We just want our football. We want our yeah. fantasy football season. We want to watch football. We get mad when when like this when these stories came out. They these these uh, these COVID cases come on. We're like shit. Like, are they going to play this game this weekend? Like, hell, like, I got I got a very important fantasy football player in that team. Like, I do not want that game to be postponed. So there's some there's some implications there. And so I think we get a little bit emotional with, with that part of it. But Yeah, that's fair. That's yeah, fair. at the same time, we just want football to be played. I agree. I agree. Now, let's get into the fantasy thing. Like, what's – now, a third man hasn't been in a while. What's What's a pressing topic – that our third man has been itching because he's been on the sidelines and in dying to contribute to the conversation and lash out with some rage. Why, you know, some of the things that points that we brought up. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you the floor with the, don't get, don't go on a historical tangent or anything that will take 20 minutes, but All right. I'm going to give you a chance. What is something from this fantasy season? That's like, that's sticking to your mind right now that you want to get off your chest. Like, what are you seeing? What player like obviously, Sonny Michelle lived up to the expectation that you set for him. I'm so I'm so glad He's that, out. that he made my case for me. Holy cow! But, um, so a couple of things that and and I know you said don't go historical, but like I have to use the podcast as a reference. And you did a couple of things that upset me. Okay. <laughs> the the first the first thing What's that the- you did that upset me was you went back and you redid the jackass picks, right? And you actually associated multiple jackass picks for me because I traded for Melvin Gordon, right? So you're like, oh, he's a jackass pick and Royal uh, R3, sorry, R3 screwed. This chick is dropping. <laughs> R3 screwed mute boy and drafted a suck team. Now, the problem is you gave me no credit for m- – pulling off the trade with the time because that trade would have never happened if it didn't happen when I did it. Now I gave up Drew Brees and Zach Ertz. A Drew Brees has been on a down year and Zach Ertz is on IR. I got a starting running back. Call it what you want. 
who sits on my bench to fill it. Now, I don't have any dependence on Melvin Gordon other than the fact that he takes any bye week and makes it harder for my opponent because I get a starting running back that gets 15 carries a game, which is all you need in a starting running back to be viable. So I wanted to caveat that that Jack pick was bullshit to be blamed on me because Devontae it made my Freeman. bench better. Devontae Freeman, Freeman gets 15 get plus better. carries. Devontae, Devontae Freeman gets 15 plus carries. The Giants suck. The Broncos don't suck because they beat the Patriots. I thought they sucked. They beat the Patriots. I can't yeah, talk I got, shit about yeah, it. Yeah, with Philip Lindsay that I have. <laughs> In the week before, Gordon scored three touchdowns at 21 points. So what do you want to say about that? No, our, our point okay. Jared, Next. was that you trade, you trade for jackass picks. You, tra- you, you seek them out. See, and that was the other thing, is you referenced last year's jackass this is, pick with Devontae Freeman. Aza, this is what we do. We, we, we <sighs> want to make sure that we – we hit a nerve. When we hit a nerve, <laughs> we are doing our job. As, Amen. As Bullshit podcasts. trade last year. I got rid of Antonio fucking Brown to this jackass. Antonio <laughs> Brown. You Wait blame minute. me. At least I got a player that played the Don't year. Don't tell me Antonio Brown. Hey, you took Antonio that was, Brown. That was he terrible. He got his ass cut no, off. No, that, that hurts. Oh, that hurts. That yeah, hurts. Better, his, that better hurts, hurt. Jarvis. It better hurts. <laughs> like you hit a I'm nerve there. I'm not done my rant. You don't you get hit, to cut me off. Azar you, gave me the You hit a nerve. You don't get to cut me off. Azar. I'll mute him. <laughs> no, no, no. The no, second, is, I'm hosting this podcast, damn it. Crap. The second bullshit is, yes, I, you know what? I'm not even going to digress when you talk shit about my boy, Aaron Rodgers. I know you went off on this thing. Although, Meat, you gave me credit for taking him in the sixth round. I love I Aaron Rodgers. I'll yeah. take, okay. I'm going to leave him to the side because I could just take up all my time on him. You went back and started talking all this praise about let's do a redraft and let's pick players and this and that. And aside from the one week injured, one week that he had injured, Dalvin Cook has been one of the top three running backs in football. That man is scoring touchdown. He's on a six game touchdown streak. The fuck out of here shaking your head. No at me. <laughs> you can take Derrick Henry and his one stiff arm every month and shove it up to a fat Greek ass up in Maine because I would take Dalvin Cook a hundred times out of a hundred over hey, your suck bag Derrick Jarvis Henry. Is coming out. And that yeah. now, now poo, I know I know Sean Connery. Hanging out of his I helmet. know Sean Connery. Derrick, Henry, Henry. Derrick Henry's helmet. Did you ever see that turd coming off of his neck? <laughs> I can't watch a Derrick Henry game because I just want to flush his head down a toilet. That's where he belongs. You in that freaking gr- Hold on. I love I love this version of Jarvis. I love it. I love it. This this random rage, he's going to be on the bench for the next three podcasts now. <laughs> <laughs> a dark side is coming out of him. I, like, love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then just we wait. missed this. Do you know we what? Listen. This. Listen. I I'm going to take some- last week I got def- I got beat and and I got beat over the biggest bunch of bullshit. I have yeah. to listen to Antifa boy talk shit to me now because the Seattle fucking Seahawks couldn't convert a third and two to ice the game and then couldn't score on two goddamn chances to kick a fucking field goal in overtime and gave Kyla Murray and Hopkins enough time to score enough points with a field goal kicker to kick a game winning field goal after he missed one. And I still had a chance to win to beat me by three goddamn points. I got to listen to Antifa. Tell me over and over again about all oh, you fantasy football. Oh, I'm a B leaguer coming up to the A league, beating Jarvis, get the best team, all this crap. I got to listen to now. Antifa's and it was in first bullshit. place right now. Yeah. God, isn't it like sacrilege? Like you know, socialism you, is winning. What is happening for Antifa what, boy to be winning? Let me just like Biden minute, is going to win the election. I'm going to I'm going to you because you, you're just you're just going off the rails here. You're, no. you're, you're just, you are you know so I blame? angry right now. Do you know who I blame for all this? Our fucking three. <laughs> That's who's at the root of all of. Yeah, this. he is. He is the, at the root of this. The guy who said he claims he will never listen to our podcast again, which I'm I'm, I'm pushing the bullshit button on. Yeah, that. bullshit. You know, I can talk more shit about him here and I'm going to be nice as pie to his <laughs> face. So if he ever wants to hear what I think, he can come here and listen to it because <laughs> I'm done with his bullshit. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hey, good job. Right. It's coming out. I love it. Hey, but but I do got to just say, what what place are you in now, Jarvis? What place? What's in the standings? Uh, third, fourth. Third, fourth? Third or fourth? Third or fourth. Yeah. Fourth. fourth. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're going to be out. What, of you got to punch line to that? You're still you're, in the fucking you're, basement. You're, you're going to be. I'm on the, I'm the fucking third. I'm a fucking right ahead now. of you. I'm fucking third place, motherfucker. That, you're just and, keeping my seat warm because your ass is fatter than mine. 
hey, listen to me. I'm playing you this week. So yeah, after you're tomorrow, lose, so after tomorrow, you're gonna, tomorrow, you're gonna be out of the playoffs. All right, all right, you're gonna all right. be out of the playoffs. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rate it. I get your whole co-host under control. I didn't come up with this. I'm gonna rate it in. I'm gonna rate it in. Okay, so. So for the for the last segment of this podcast, what I wanted to do is we're at the midpoint. Eight, we're at the eighth game's coming up, or eight, week eight is coming up. So we're at the midpoint of the season, full season. I, what I want to do is, no, this is going to get people really angry, but we're at the midpoint. Predictions. You guys talked about it. Antifa boy is number one. He's not going to win a game the rest of the season. All right. So what I want to say is, Let's make your predictions now. One, I want to go through it. I want to go through who's there now. And then after that, I want to say, who do you think will be out of, just to make it simple, who's out of the playoffs? So right now, when you look at R3's team, and R3, um, Antifa Boys team, do you just think. Just for the record, R3 quit and doesn't have a team anymore. Yeah, that's true. He, he just drafted for uh, Mute. Quitter. Unless he so, quits again and then joins our league again next season. All right. So when I look at Antifa Boy's team, I don't understand how he's 5-2. and two. I look at that team, and I know he's got Kyler Murray, and I know he's got DeAndre Hopkins. Who else on that team? Maybe Thielen? Like, those three players are— Both those guys are on a bye week this week. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, when you look at that team, this team's in first place. How is this team in first place? I just don't understand. I don't see. Is it luck? He doesn't have any running backs. No, I agree. I agree. Because his running backs this week, he's starting Singletary and Swift. Those are his two starting running backs. And C.D. Lamb is his flex. Burton is his tight end. I agree, Azar. I mean, I just don't see. Burrow is right now is is starting QB um, because Murray is um, is on a bye week. Nick Chubb. Right, he's on the he's on the IR. Yeah, I don't. I I agree. So, I agree. So let, I don't know. His team is not it. good. I gotta say, if I was gonna rank it, is he belongs there, or is overrated? Overrated, hundred percent overrated. That's an CD overrated Lamb team. Was a benefit. CD Lamb was a benefit of the Dak Prescott machine, and once Dak went down, he lost any chance he had it. Thielen had one big week, which helped him out. There is no no way. His team is legitimately Kyla Murray and DeAndre Hopkins mm. with with a random gift from either Thielen, DeAndre, what's his name, Swift from Detroit. Swift. I don't even know what his name. He he came out of nowhere to vulture a touchdown from freaking Peterson. You, and, you know okay. who else is overrated? Jarvis's team. He's got. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's got no, 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 Show up on the podcast and you can't say shit. No, no. I'm not on here for two weeks and you're kissing my ass that my team's unstoppable. <laughs> It right. took a freaking, it took a freaking double overtime Seattle Pete Carroll fucking suck job to beat me from listen, from listen, hit, hit, listen. Oh no, you lost no, no, to no, Antifa no, 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 Boy's no. crappy ass team. Just you know accept what it. Antifa Just accept Boy it. sold his soul to Kamala Harris's tax devil, <laughs> and whoever AOC is sucking off these days, that's who he sold his uh, team right, to right, 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 in right. order to beat me. Let's go back on track. Is us the, the voice of reason here. I try to go right, back bring track. us back on okay. track. Steven's right, team track is uh, who, 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 what right. do we got? We got number two right. is Gronk Smash. You three, dumb brother. Three categories. No. Real deal, overrated, or inconsistent. Okay? Uh, so, um, so when you look at this Gronk's is Cooper team, Kroll's team? Cooper Crawl. Okay. When Cooper I look Kroll. at Cooper Crawl's team, he's got talent with Kamara, Hunt. Josh Devante Allen, Devontae Adams, and Allen. He's what are the categories again? He's the first one. Real deal. Real deal. He's the real deal. He's so, playing Leonard Fournette. As shut up. Sweet. Nobody asked you. Oh, you know you sh- no, Listen, <laughs> who knows? Listen, Josh. But he's got. But he got Chris listen, Carson. Listen, when I beat you this week, I learned this in Maine. Oh my oh, God! No, you shut up. Your mother <laughs> wears army boots. Hey, That's when, a Maine when, comeback. When, when is Josh? I gonna go back on vacation again? <laughs> we, what, what? Do we need a third man in? Do we even need a third man in? We All might right. as well bring an R3. At least he brings something to the table. We just you listen, little... Why don't you bring your social security to the table? Our, our, Cooper right. Kroll's team is legit. That, All right, real deal. He, he got right. a good team, real deal. Now, now you guys skip can... number three? Unlike, unlike Jarvis's team. Now, now let's just get – now you guys can argue. You guys are arguing before we even get to it. Big Meat's team. Sucks. Real deal? Awesome. Awesome. Overrated? Or overrated. Awesome. Overrated. Overrated. Got AB now. 
I got oh, Julio Jones back you don't in have action. AB. Antifa boy has AB. What is wrong got, with you? I got Tom Brady throwing to AB. The hell no, do I want? The, I don't want him. AB. Oh. I don't. I don't want AB. He's you just a weapon you, for Tom you know Brady. The one reason you're allowed to talk shit is because you drafted Tyler fucking Lockett. Like that's it. <laughs> I get it. it. Awesome. You're starting awesome. Jamal Williams from Green Bay. Yes. 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 What do you mean? What do you mean? He's what do you mean? What do you mean? Throw up in my microphone louder? He's projected. Oh, Julio, 30, what, are you Julio jealous? Jones. Are you jealous, Mr. Julio? Jonas? No. Are you jealous, I'm jealous because about Jamal I'm Williams wouldn't because sniff my I'm projected about, Because you were projected oh. to score more points than I was until Jamal Williams was taken over as a starting running back. And now I'm projected to outscore you this week. Are you mad about that? I, I'm going to call bro? Aaron Rodgers you and mad, tell him bro? to ignore Jamal. You know what Jamal Williams is going to do? He's going to go wash the clean, dry the bench off so Aaron Rodgers sits in a dry spot. That's exactly what's going to happen. How was Halen? How was Hurst the other day? What, what, what the fuck is yeah, 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 he, he did great. All right. Yeah, he did great. He I, I just want to highlight. I, just I hate highlight. his team. Right, his team sucks. There's nobody on his team I'm afraid of. All right, so I got to say. Except Tyler Lockett. Poop tail? You're not afraid of poop tail? No. Come on. When you look at Eric Henry, in Cincinnati, look at, you look know at what in Cincinnati, everybody turns into Joe Mixon. Look at Big Meat's bench. He's got he's got the he's got the trifecta. Kenyon oh Drake, God. Devontae Freeman, and Lindsay. So <laughs> my fear I gotta give you meat. I don't you're doing well right now, you're surging back, but I will get say you, you're inconsistent. I, I don't say you're overrated, but you're inconsistent, and it's mainly because if your star a star player goes down or one of your key Starters go down. You're you fun. don't have a lot of depth. Hey, can I Who's say that's why you're consistent? This you? week you're overrated, but last week and next week you're inconsistent. What do you mean last week? What does last week have to do with it? I wasn't I playing you last week, and I'm not playing you next week, so you'll be right. inconsistent at best. But this week you're overrated. All right, let's go to Jarvis's team. Let's go. Let's move. Now, now, Big Me can get his rage on. So the drunken clams. You know what? Everybody's been telling him. He's been the real deal. Like everybody's been kissing his ass because they're it's afraid the real of his deal. No, no, no. I, I will. I will say right it's now, the real Jarvis deal. has the best team in the entire <laughs> league. He's unstoppable. No one's going to stop Jarvis. Jarvis, listen. Can I Venmo you the money today, yes. or or can I just do it? All right, I'll, I'm going to do it because right. no, wait till November first for tax for corporate tax purposes. Jarvis has got Aaron Rodgers, who is better than Tom Brady right now. By the way, is our a little little. Little sidebar there, Tyree Kill. Oh, you know how much I love Tyree Kill. Stephon Diggs. I had him before. He's a great player. Jonathan Taylor, Boston Scott. Oh, the curse of Boston Scott. Got Dalvin Cook. You got a great team, Jarvis. You didn't even read my fucking team. Boston Scott is a fill-in because Miles Sanders is hurt, and you passed on Miles Sanders to take the boot, Kenyon Drake. By the way, thank you for that. <laughs> and then, uh, so we got to point that out. The... And that's fine, but like. I also have yeah, well, yeah, what's a Miles Sanders doing right bench. now? He's not playing. Uh, we're not, we're not, guys, just, just we're keeping it simple. We're just there's nothing simple when it comes to that right. angry mug. You guys are the hey, real deal. Don't interrupt the 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 uh, the rivalry that I have with Jarvis yeah. right now because I had Julio Jones who Sucks. had like fifty yards in the first minute and a half and then he, he couldn't fucking score a touchdown. You know what you know what's wrong with Julio Jones and I watched that game the other day. He Everything. doesn't put his arms up to catch the ball. He puts his arms out like 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 for the ball to like drop in his arms. Put your fucking arms up to like catch the ball. Like he's a he's a freak out there. Like if he put his arms up to catch the ball in that end zone, he, that would have been a touchdown. So this is not a kid friendly episode. This is what this has turned out to be. So do not as a disclaimer, people do not have your kids in the car. You Just can't give yourself. a disclaimer after we swear, Azar. <laughs> Sean Connery has passed away today. This is a very emotional day, yeah. Azar. All right, we're Your gonna, mother's a whore, Trebek. All right, I'm going to just label my team inconsistent, and we're going to move on. So, Why did we gloss over your suck team? Oh, no, no. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, exactly. No, I, let's go to Azar's team here. What is inconsistent. this? Inconsistent. Come on. You listen. are a biggest, the biggest fraud out of anybody. Oh, that hurts. He's, he's starting Hollywood Brown and and Aguilar as his two receivers. You can't even say he's that, got, man. He sounds like a character in what's that? What's have, that TV show you guys oh, watch that I don't? Wait, I what's the dragon weeks. TV show? Get Lord of the Throne. That's Lord who of, that guy is from. Lord of the he's, Throne. Now, yeah, that's he's it. totally yeah. from that fucking show. And he's then got, you got he's the, got Gerard Bernard as his <laughs> Bernard. Gerard. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever his dealing... fucking name is, Giovanni. He's got. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's got he's got <laughs> Cooper Cup. He's got Cooper Kroll. Cup as his It plugs. might as well be Kroll. <laughs> Wow. He's so bad. You his literally are, have Cooper Kroll on your team. Gio are, Bernard Amari slash Cooper. Joe Mixon is Amari the Cooper, your third round pick there. Why isn't he on the bench? Uh, Why is got, he on the bench? He's got, a, he's got a flat tire. He's got no, he's got a third string quarterback thrown to him. Just I, I, li- I like how Aza just glossed over that. He's like, oh, let's move it on my team, whatever. Ah, well, you guys are that... you guys aren't really adding any fantasy value, just shitting on want? each other. Okay. We're not even doing anything. Russell Wilson is trying to win the MVP. Hollywood Brown has done shit. Aguilar was reviewed high on some obscure fantasy podcast this week, so you picked him up and started him. Clyde Edwards E Lair, because nobody wants to say the letter H for some reason. Oh, he's on the Chiefs. Great. He had a Hilaire. good game last I week. I like he's to call him Hell Air. I don't Gerard care. Bernard, as John would say, is a fucking Bengal, and he, he's like the shit that Joe Mixon left on the bottom of his cleat. Noah Fant is a fucking Come on, he's a no offense. He's a, no a, he's a have, on the NFL. No ass. Oh, look at Scumbag. Cup. Are I you had, kidding me? I, had da- I would I had rather have Robert Woods on my team than Cooper Cup. And I would I never Goddard. have Robert oh, Woods on my team. Now you don't want Cup. Oh, you cucks. All right. Who you, you know play, what? Who are you playing this week, Aza? You should have started Jared Cook, right? Playing, because uh, at, uh, least, pork chop. at least Drew Brees can reach him. I don't know what's throwing a no offense. Amari Cooper was a third round pick for you, who, by the way, you're proving is a jackass pick by. Oh, putting no, a no, completely no. healthy receiver so, no, on your bench. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Shut defend up, I'm my, done. I'm gonna defend my co-host here because you thought Claypool was worth picking up. You were like, oh, this yeah, guy that was, got that three touchdowns nonsense. in one week. I'm gonna pick him up and start him. And he well, had that was a nonsense. No, I agree with you there, for a yard and a half. No, but, no, but he Deontay is playing. Jo- he, he, he is Johnson. playing pork chops 2.0, and 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 uh, Moore and Davis underperformed uh, when they played Thursday night. So. Uh, Azar does have a chance to win this week. Yeah, he might win this Barely. week, but his team still sucks. I, I said it was inconsistent. So it's not overrated because I'm not doing No, great. you're overrated. It's Russell Wilson and everybody else on your team. Wait a second. It's Russell yeah. Wilson and Clyde Edwards Elair. Hellair. No, uh-huh. no. It's Elair. You got his error. Right. All right. And then All everybody right. else. I like Hellair. Your All team right. literally has two and a half players on it. And if they don't perform, you suck. So your team is overrated. All right. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah, not as overrated as Jarvis's team, but that's close. right. All right, so pork chops. Oh, this team is gross. <laughs> it's gross. Oh. That's another great, great word. I think oh. if, he, if I think if McCaffrey wasn't hurt, I think they would be the real deal. I no. think they just because Lamar Jackson's played fully healthy and he's nowhere near the number one, two, three, four, or five quarterback. DK Metcalf is a beast, though. Yeah, he's okay. got Metcalf. Love he's got Metcalf. Kittle. He's- Kittle's okay. having a good Kittle. Oh, now, now, now you, now Are you, you kidding me? Kitt, Kittle is on the same level as Sean Connery. Kittle has had one, two, I'm sorry, two impact games, two out of eight, out of seven, two out of seven. Kittle has had an impact. Not going to argue the talent. I'm going to argue the production. Two games. You're telling me you he Clarence missed, Claypool, he missed two games. He, he was doesn't matter. Games. It doesn't matter. That's, Clarence that's just, Claypool has impacted as many games as George Kittle. And we just said A's our team sucks. So that's my no, stance. I, I think his team is the real deal because Lamar Jackson it's can turn it on. Deal. You're telling me Lamar Jackson, who has been insignificant all year, DJ Moore, who has a ton I of yards. I wouldn't say insignificant. Great. Lamar Jackson, I think, is He's still got two good wide capable receivers. of putting up huge numbers. Huge numbers. Jar- he Jarvin, hasn't. Real deal. He's the real deal. I'm sorry. He's you're, not you're, the real deal. You're just trying my to lash God. out. You're trying to lash out, but uh, he's had three good games. Jarvis is just angry. He's just no. angry today. Yes, he, he is. Jarvis, he's not even rational. Take a, are you? Listen, you I need just to take said a Cooper Cole's team was take the a real deep deal. breath. Take a deep breath. Relax, guys. You guys are soft. Jarvis, right. it's been a while since you've been on this soft. podcast. You just need to like just take a deep you breath. You want to give? You're so team. mad at R three. You're mad at R three. That's what it is. I am mad at R three. And okay, Sean fine. Connery's I'll, death. I'll I've upgrade put pork you in a state to, of depression. I'll right. upgrade pork chops to inconsistent. Uh, I meet real deal or inconsistent. The pork chops. Yeah. Uh, I'm saying the real deal. Yeah, because I think once McCaffrey comes back, I think Lamar Jackson is is he's underperformed, and the fact that he's still at that level where he's at now at the standings, Lamar Jackson's gonna get better, and I think I think he's gonna have those big games, and it's gonna carry him, and he's the real deal. Yeah, absolutely. I I agree with that. All right. Let's go to the Ireland drunks. Let's go to our boy, COVID boy. Okay. COVID boy 
because of his pickup of Jefferson, I would say was provided a good boost to his team. And I actually think there's a lot of talent and he's just had some bad string of luck with like the points against him. Mm-hmm. But I think the way Tannehill Tannehill is playing a lot better than a lot of people projected I like going to the season. Yeah. And Jefferson was a huge pickup. No, the nowhere. biggest pickup for him was that kid Robinson out of Jacksonville. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean Robinson He doesn't have him. Robinson. Oh, oh he does. Oh I'm sorry, he does oh, have he Robinson. Does. I I thought he's on bye that, week. That's the, that's he's like third ranked so, running back. So think about his team. He's got Jefferson, who's one of the best receivers, right, for Minnesota right now. He's becoming like the lead receiver, and he's taking he's taking Diggs's role there, right? Sure. And he's got and Robinson. So those two pickups, and if you look at the rest of his team, he still has Tannehill's playing great. He's got Elliott. He's got if Godwin. Kelsey. If Godwin is healthy, he is. He's gonna have a monster he's, team. And he's he's got DJ Chark still, who's on yeah. a bye this week. So yeah, he's got. I mean, he can start Robinson, Godwin, Elliott, Jefferson, Robbie Anderson, Chark. I mean, he's yeah. Mark Ingram, Tevin Coleman. I mean, he's got he's got some depth. If they're one, the problem for him is in, in, injuries and luck. Yeah. So, and I and my recommendation to him from a fantasy perspective, I think it's time. I, I don't know Mark Ingram. I, I there's just there's no value holding on to Mark Ingram. I just don't. I know he needs him because he doesn't have a lot of depth at running back, but Mark Ingram is not the man he was. Um, no, but again, the with Mark Ingram goes Lamar Jackson. So if Lamar Jackson is pushing that offense, I had Mark Ingram last year, and he was 12 points plus a week. Yeah, but not this season, though. Far from no, it. Because from Lamar it. Jackson's being held in check. Hence why. But I don't think he's getting the same number of looks either, though. I think they're, they're, they're splitting the carries. They're not... No. He's not so Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins are not getting enough carries to be considered a split. It's still Mark Ingram's show, although he's hurt. So I don't know. So you don't think Dobbins has been stealing Ingram's opportunities? No, not enough. Yeah, yeah, not enough to be a factor. I'm I'm a little shocked. All right, they were projecting it, but it hasn't happened to the point where it's like, oh damn, yet. All right, I'm now the to- debacle that is the R three draft. So that one is I hate to give it credit because we trashed R three so bad. But like st- he stole AJ Brown. He stole AJ Brown? He got him in like the eighth round or something. Yeah, he did slip through the cracks mistakenly. And um, I mean that is him imme- immediately replaced Michael Thomas. And if he gets Michael Thomas back, he's gonna have Michael Thomas, AJ Brown. I mean, he's he's got Aaron, got Jones. Gurley. Hend- yeah. Aaron Jones and Gurley are putting up numbers. And then Slayton's not bad. I mean, Mostert, if Mostert is healthy and he can start Mostert, Gurley, and A.J. Brown, Michael Thomas and A.J. Brown, oh, my goodness. All right, but here's the problem for him is he is right now two and five. And the clock is ticking on his team. I would say his team could be the real deal. But I think where he is right now, even if he was the real deal, he needs to win straight out to make the playoffs. He's got to go on a five-game winning streak. Because I'm so angry at R3, I'm only going to go inconsistent at best. Who are we talking about here? Uh, Mute Boy. The Mute Boy. (laughs) And, you know, in Mute Boy, it's not R3's drafting. It's actually Mute Boy's waiver wire work. That's actually helped salvage a yes, team. Yes, 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 yes. Because no, I, R3, I, I can't. What are you talking I, about? No, I will, come on, Jarvis. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. He picked uh, up Daryl Henderson. He picked up Tanyan. He, he picked up wait, Ruggs wait, today. Daryl Henderson was drafted. Not by him. Are you sh- okay? I'll have to verify. No, that. Because okay, so he was picked up because um, what, what's his name? But uh, Aaron. So, but look, Aaron Jones, Gurley. He's got Keenan Allen. Did he not make a trade with you though, Jarvis? He's got he finally has a decent quarterback. It's true. <laughs> you give him a decent so, quarterback. So you gave him a decent quarterback. And and AJ Brown, I know he drafted him. R three drafted him. AJ Brown oh. at the time, right? He was injured. Like yeah, it was, was like injured. an unknown, like it was an no, unknown injury. He, he was going in the second round before the injury. Yes, yes, yes. Drafts. And and he still took him what third, fourth, or whatever, whatever round. Like it the was. eighth, John. No, yeah, the yeah. eighth. Yeah, maybe fifth. Maybe fifth. No, but, ah, it was late. 
It was late. It was later than he should have gone. And AJ Brown looks like a fucking beast. Oh like, my absolute goodness. beast the last couple beast weeks. Last, he's last year. He's he looks big... he he's built like DK Metcalf. Like he's fast. He's just physical. Like he's like they just keep throwing him the ball. He took AJ Brown in the fifth round for tech fifth for round. technical yeah. accuracy. Yes, and he should have gone in the second or third round. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. So, so with Drew Brees now, thanks to you, Jarvis, because you traded him for nothing. He's got <laughs> Drew. He's got Drew Brees, uh, AJ Brown, uh, Gurley, who's a touchdown machine. Yeah, I mean he's the Aaron Jones, who's on a buy this week. Like he's he's unbelievable. He's Michael Thomas, whatever. So. Oh, he's injured. Yeah, he's right. injured, that's idiot. Right. Because right. you're that's starting right. that's Jamal, Williams. Jamal Williams. Dumbass. That's right. Oh that's my right. god. I'm just looking Can zero I be any here. less threatened by this idiot. <laughs> hey, listen, dummy. Don't fucking <laughs> don't be an asshole. Don't <laughs> yeah. be an but ass. Despite all that talent, his team is still only two and five. Yeah, but that so, talent has been hurt. So, Can you, that, he's, so he's, he's inconsistent. inconsistent. He's inconsistent. I know. I, I, being I, fair, he's just I'm being. A, I, so so just a little little tangent here. So I was a Azar, you know, I'm a big fan of Kirk Minahan, right? Yeah. I don't, I, I used to, you know, I loved him when he was on WEI. I don't listen to him as much a, a, on a podcast because, you I know, I, 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 I treat him. Yeah, but I treat him as a competitor. You, you're listening because oh. we have a podcast. He has a podcast. He's a, he's competing with us, Azar. I like to learn so, from the best. I'm learning. Yeah, but yeah, but I, I look at him as a competitor. So okay. I don't want to give him the, the, the free advertising. Okay. You know, because because you know he's, <laughs> sure. we're I'm we're sure. on like the same level. We're on the same <laughs> level in terms of podcast. So okay. with Kirk Minahan, I don't know if he still does it with a podcast, but I know with the WEI when he was on there, he used to like to call people dummy. Yeah, and, and that's and that was like, I, I loved it. He would just be like, "Hey, dummy," and then he would just go on with his point. So that I'm gonna steal that from him, and just start start using that term "dummy" for everyone. So so Jarvis. Listen, dummy. <laughs> you got to stay in character. My, stay in character, me. Come on. My this podcast, point. This podcast is running an hour and 15 minutes. We got to wrap it up. We're Let's going go. through. No, we're not wrapping up nothing. We're going three hours. Oh, this my is God. Three hour podcast. I hate when you two are together. You guys <laughs> just ramble. Can we get to a point? That's what people complain to us. Guys. No one's complaining nothing. We got, we got. Oh my god, we got I a mean, lot of listeners. We got a lot right, of no likes. More, no more, no more late followers. night. We wait, no more late wait, night. Wait, I, I'm letting him speak. I didn't. We're not going back and forth. I sock. Uh, what's this? What do we got here? Meat grinders. <laughs> what do we call him? What's his name? He's still talking about He's combine boy. boy. He's combine, combine boy. boy. Go oh, combine still, boy. Yeah, I'm still talking they about got, meat boy. Thank God for Jarvis dropping names the whole episodes and everybody. Yeah, just, just drop every, people don't want to be called out. But Jarvis will let your name out. So, uh, anyways. Oh, get I over it. I, did my, it. I, I completely forgot my thought. Because it wasn't say, that good. I'm just going to say Mute Boy is good, dummy. Okay. So, all that, just so you could say Mute Boy was good, dummy. Yes. Did we oh just God. agree on something? No. I went inconsistent because I'm angry at R3. I like all Mute right. Boy. I like Mute Boy's team. Uh, you know, I wish I, I, I – Not as much as I love skip Jarvis's all this, team. Combine, Combine Boy has had – Injuries to Saquon Barkley and Eckler. Can we just skip over his team because it sucks? He got. I've been, I've been drinking too much vodka tonight. <laughs> yeah, clearly, clearly, my God. I've been drinking right. my vodka and lemonade. All right, so let's go. Let's just jump because you know you can't. His team sucks. Hey, it's if so I don't, bad. if I don't eat candy tonight, I'm drinking vodka. Smash right, me, thank you. Smash. <laughs> so, so I, I gotta say, Combine Boy wasn't a bad. It just he just he got killed with injuries because he's got a great tight end. It, just the fact he's using Harris. Yeah, you, yeah, you love his, his tight end. Don't his, his team is <laughs> his team is done. His he's team is starting all done. Damian Harris and Miles Gaskin. If yeah, you don't know who that in Brian I, Ayuk, Ayuk, a- yuck. Yeah. Uh, yuck. Anybody with yuck in their name, your team is yuck. It's not, it's not a good football name. All right, now let's go to the most overrated team in our league. And the most underperforming team is Art Roper. So, I mean, let's go to this team. Oh. I know he's going to get it. But how are you in last place with Ugh. Mahomes? He sucks. 
He's the Mahomes. worst drafter. He know. sucks he's, at fantasy football. His no. team doesn't suck, though. You know wait, no, what? No, no, no. He, he sucks. He dropped T.Y. Hilton and picked them back up. Did anybody see that? Yep. Yep. Why? I don't understand why. why? T.Y. Hilton's awful. Why? <laughs> why? That, that, this is desperation. This is a, that, that's yeah, a I don't, desperation I don't get it. pickup. He's got Mahomes, right? Mahomes is Mahomes. He's going to put up numbers. Yeah. He's got Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs is solid. Great. We we were nervous about even James Conner and Ron, Ronald Jones has had three 100 yard games in a row. Yeah, so that's three running backs. Now do you think start. now on a fantasy perspective, is the return of Blunt, Legarrette Blunt from injuries going to impact Ronald? Did Jones? you just say Legarrette Blunt? No, Legarrette Blunt. <laughs> My God, Legarrette Blunt is. Leonard, I see, I'm not even drinking like you guys, and you guys oh, come listen, come listen, on. listen, uh, dummy. Garrett Blunt has not played this season. Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette. No, they called Leonard Fournette the nickelback, which means when there's five D-backs on the field, then they'll put Fournette in because nobody can tackle him, which – Oh, thank you for thank you for that that football uh, knowledge. You didn't there, Josh. listen flag football. Thank, thank, thank Denzel you, thank Washington. You for that, thank you for that you nickel. Wish, thank you, you for that nickel defense listen. knowledge that you just hey, Bill Belichick's going to call you for your defensive schemes in flag football that, once he gets fired. That, that really Patriots. was a combine boy factoid. Thank you. That was, but that added you're value. Welcome. That did add fantasy value. Okay, so you're saying he's not going to get the number of reps when he re, when he goes no. full speed back in. No, okay. Ronald Jones will stay in, and basically Fournette, even though it's so – not to go too technical, but I would be willing to bet that it's going to be a reverse running back by committee, which what will happen is when you expect to see the traditional back in on first and second down, it'll be Ronald Jones, and on third down, you expect the passing back, but they're going to put the big back in because it'll add a layer of uncertainty that will help the passing game because if you have Fournette and all your wide receivers in, and Fournette gets the ball, you got nobody that can tackle him. You was, bring in the heavier package to defend Fournette. Now you got all these speedy wide receivers on the field. It's a matchup nightmare that I think Brady via Belichick is taking to Tampa. So shove that grin up your ass. So that, that was so basically in, in other words, that was a bunch of nonsense. And basically, just in a nutshell. Nonsense. In, in a legitimate. nutshell, in a nutshell. Mr. Roper's team sucks. Just say, just say his, his team sucks. Team That's suck. it. I can't That's, say all that. no. That's all I you got to say. That's all you got to say. No. Why do you, why do you got to go into like sucks. deep? Why do you got to go deep into like, it, like he, the analysis of his team? the host asked. I would say, all right, so let's, so the point of this, so we could wrap this podcast up because we're going to go for like meat. two hours. No, I we're think, going three hours. Asa. No, we're not going three hours. We're going to shut down. Three hours. The, you can oh, you can jump off, and me and me and Jarvis can continue. Right. We're going to three hours. So today. the point is, is that I think even though his team isn't bad, the fact that it's he's in last place, least amount of points, it's an overrated team. It sucks to get that label. No, no, but it's, it's overrated. Not overrated. No, it's not overrated. He just sucks. When you, okay. <laughs> if like if he was a good team. And he's not performing well. Then he's then he's like he's overrated. But no, he's, so his team sucks. we didn't create. A, so we, didn't, we want to add a fourth category. Just sucks. His team just, just sucks. sucks. No, because then I want to go back. There's like three other teams that just <laughs> suck. Right. No, his team is overrated. Like, like Jarvis's talent, team, not a is, talent, but it doesn't produce. It doesn't produce. Jarvis's points. team is awesome, and it's just like it's Azar, like unstoppable. It's just not me, though. You can't blame this on me. No, I got a drunken co-host here that's just <laughs> stammering. So we're going to wrap it up. So my the reason I we're did this exercise. We're wrapping up nothing. <laughs> we're going three hours. This Jarvis, is a three-hour tour. Four more I would, years. I would say if your wife's going to listen to an episode, this might not be the best one. <laughs> this, this is a good one to listen to. <laughs> oh I'm not God. the drunken co-host you're referring to. <laughs> that's true. Um, so the reason I asked this is when you look at this, these 10 teams, who are the four teams that you will say guarantee after another, what, when's the uh, playoffs? Another seven, uh, five more okay. weeks? Me, Cooper Crowell, I think Antifa is going to fall off, but he's five and two. So he may get in just out of like, uh oh, ness. Yep. And so I think, I think me's out of the picture. Come on. I'm in Your fucking third sucks. place. I'm three points behind the lead, league lead in points. You know, Aza, I tried to give you some love. Not going to be not you. Making it. Azar's not making it. You guys, based on all your logic that Pork Chop 2.0 is going to make it, I don't think they will. I think that team's terrible. All right, so who's oh, out? Who's in? Will. 
Uh, it so up. it's going to be who's it's going to be Cooper who's Crowell. Just... It's going to be me. It's going to be so you see out of the four teams. So it's to be Cooper Crowell, me, and then the it'll be I think Antifa boy, meat, and you and Pork Drop are all going to like. Fight and jockey for the last two spots there. So I, it's, right. it's tough to say, but in that mix, what, what, what if I now beat the you problem this is week? What I if think I beat you this week. Then, then I what think are you mute say? boy, mute boy's team is yeah, going to surge. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Silence. silence. So you think? Fight. What do you want me to answer? You're, silence. Like, what happens if the Rock runs for president on Tuesday? Like, is he going to win? I don't know. It's what you're fucking asking me. Like, what do no, you want me to ask, ask you? Who's not making the playoffs? Question. You're going on a tangent. Who's not making the playoffs? Not yeah, making the oh, not making the okay. playoffs right now. You, Azar, making, you okay. are not making the playoffs. Roper, oh yeah, that's going out on a limb. <laughs> like, Com- yeah. Roper combine. Oh I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. The two guys are uh, two and five. Yeah, good job, Jarvis. Pork, yeah. pork chop and Azar, not making it. Not All making right. it. So, pork chops not making it. I don't think so. I think that I know Lamar Jackson. You guys want to SSD and all that, but I he no, nope, I don't see it. No, I think I think um, uh, let's see. So definitely, definitely Roper, definitely uh, a combine boy. I think uh, I think mute boy is going to surge. All right, I think so too. I think I think. No I think thanks to R three. I want it on the record. I'm not giving R three oh, credit don't know. for that. No, I, I say pork chop 2.0 makes it in. I think Azar doesn't make it. And believe it or not, I'm going to go out and I'm going to I'm going to be bold here. I'm going to say Antifa boy doesn't yeah, make it. I could see that. I'm going to say Antifa boy falls apart, loses the last five weeks. Wow. All right. Yeah. That's bold. All right. I'm writing these down because yeah. we're going to revisit this on week yeah. 13. I'm going to say week 13. And did I you, think did you write them down? I did write them down. I didn't see you write them down. It's recorded. Uh, it's recorded. Right there. Right there. So Thank I you. got – all right. And I'm going to go and say there's no way I think jump, the jump uh, – Roper is going to make it back. It's just Even if he goes on a four-game winning streak, he's not – No way. His team terrible. sucks. It's just, it's just awful. It's just, um, there's no way. Combine boy agree. I think, I think it really is hard to say who's going to be the seventh and eighth. But I'm going to squeeze it in. I think my team will squeeze in. You suck. Um, just because of Russell Wilson – I think Russell Wilson is one of those quarterbacks ahead of in one of those seasons. He's unless he uh, enough games. Unless he plays against me and I have Lockett. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm playing against DK Metcalf this week, so I might get screwed again. Um, but I'm going to say definitely – I don't think Mute Boy is going to make it. I just think he's going to swing and miss. But I think – I think who's going to fall apart? Wow. I, I think his bo- Booyah was in the bottom. I'm going to claim – I think, I think Big think B. I'm, I'm going to fall I, apart. I think Big B can fall apart because I, your team just had this quick surge, but just like that surge, it can go the other way. You're peaking right now, but I think that Big Meat's going to slip. He's going to be right. taken out by some big names. Right. I think. I, I, I think can't Tom wait to Brady. Hand you your lunch this week. How do you know? How do you Hot know lunch. there's not a trade in the making right now? How do you know there's not a uh, trade no one, in the works? No, because no one trusts you. I don't know. There's a trade that's going on right now that might might happen. All right, all right. Might happen. Jobs like is on it. mute. We can't hear. It. We can't. We can't hear it. nothing, which is great. I love it. It's the two man team again, Azar. This is uh, this is how it should be. You know, the last three podcasts, I enjoyed it. I had fun. It was great. I think we had the highest rated podcast in the last three podcasts that we've had. All right, based on IMDb. And Jarvis, that we can't still, we still can't hear Jarvis. We right. still can't hear him, which is great. I love it. And um, while while my partner is ranting, I want to do one last thing before we wrap it up because we went so long. I think it's an hour and forty five minutes. We might have to cut this in half, Big Meat. All right. Why? Why? We might just have to. So, who do you think wins it all, other than yourself? Other than myself. Okay. Quickly, quickly, we got to wrap it up. <sighs> We don't have to wrap it up nothing. We're going three hours. We're not going three hours. We're going to wrap it up after this. <laughs> We're going three hours. Right. I'm going to say. Who wins it? Oh, Jarvis. Jarvis wins it. Jarvis? All right. Yeah. Jarvis, who do you think wins it? We can't hear him. Dude, you got to turn on your mic. Nope. Something happened with him. <laughs> he, I see his, his lips moving, but nothing's happening. Am I there? All right. 
There you go. Oh, there you go. Now we can. Oh, son of a, I had so many insults the whole time you guys were just talking there. That's <laughs> ah, terrible. It was I'm all sure, wasted. I'm sure it was all a bunch of we're, nonsense. We're wrapping, oh. it up. we're wrapping it up. Who do you think is going to win it? I quickly? know. Okay. So here's what I want to say is is Gronk smash. But the fact that I have to acknowledge Cooper Crowell as a contending candidate, I just uh. well, it makes me want to vomit. So I'm going to say myself out of. No, no, you can't say yourself. Oh, I can't. Okay. Me, I'm going to go with me. Nothing to do with R3. I'm going to say that a repeat win is up for an upset in. You Mute are Boy. a dummy. That's all I got to say. Who's well, for a repeat win? Mute he's Boy. He's, he's going to go back. Mute back. Boy. Mute, Mute Boy. Boy. Like, oh, Mute wow. Boy. Wow, he's going to lightning bold. in a bottle. That's bold. All right. If his team gets healthy, he's going to be. And it's not because of R3's drafting. That's I can't a, that's reiterate a, that enough. That's a dumbass statement. All right. And yeah. I'm going to and I'm gonna say halfway into the season, based with dust settling, I'm going with Gronk Smash, too. I'm going with uh I See, Cooper how Crowell. do you feel about saying I think Cooper Crowell is going to win? Because you know he, what? You can't. Oh, if you have Alvin Kamara, the way Devontae Adams. He's going to find a way to lose it all. But Devontae Adams, the way he's playing. I know. I wanted uh, to say it, 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 too. Kareem Hunt. Is not going to give up that role. I know. I, 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 in Chris Carson, he's got three solid backs. I know. He's got a he's number got a one, good top team. three receiver. And Josh Allen is inconsistent right now, but if he can find his rhythm again, he's got I a great he's team. Got, he's got one of the best teams, but his, his forever reputation is Cooper Crowell until he proves me yeah. wrong. He's got well, no depth. He's got no depth. Do you. He, Shut up. No, I have, I have an I'm about unbelievable to serve you depth. your lunch. How do you want You want I, cheese I, I sauce on that? No, stop, you want it white stop. or wheat? Listen, How do you want it? You listen, want it wrapped? Josh Allen, Devontae Adams, Kamara, Kareem Hunt, even when Chubb comes back, he's got a solid team. I would agree, but I think Jarvis is absolutely hands down the best team in the league. He's going to win it all. All right, you just because you want to curse him this week. All right, folks, we're going to wrap it up because it's, it's a long ass podcast. I got to go make John's lunch to serve it nice and hot to him tomorrow. Yeah. I so right. I better win tomorrow. I so better win. So Not we'll, gonna happen. You'll hear it in the next podcast, folks, who actually won it because there'll be some cursing. Wait, going wait, on. get ready for it. Boom! Just come double check. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. All the right. Booyah is, is going to be alive and well, Jarvis. The booyah. It's coming. Oh, I Go have ahead, the you. memes ready. You are going to get so many discount double check suckets. It's not even going to be funny. The grin right. will be alive and well. Oh, All right, so boys. Azar it's, should, it's, it's so well to end his fine. It's just too long. It's too long. No. All right, folks. Apple Podcasts. SoundCloud and YouTube. Follow us there. You'll get the you'll hear the drama and the cursing. Stay tuned for that between these two clowns. And hopefully they'll be somewhat sober. I'm gonna make them start earlier so I can catch them on the sober end first. So <laughs> John right. Connery, rest in peace. Yes. Rest in peace, Mr. Connery. R three, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Have a good night.